Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Distinguished delegates, presenters and participants from SAC member states and other regions around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very thankful to all of you for joining us in our first SARC webinar in the year 2018. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. I am Asan Javed and I am working as at SARC Energy Center as a research fellow in renewable energy for the past four years. I shall be moderating this two-day session of the SARC webinar, the aim of which is to disseminate the findings of the SARC study report on use of submersible turbines in canals and the assessment of its resource potential to the policymakers, regulators, researchers, academia and other stakeholders from the member states. The study report was conducted last year by Dr. Nawaz Akhtar, who is one of the renowned and most famous experts of hydropower sector in South Asia region. And we are very blessed to have him with us today. Yesterday, we had covered uh, topics ranging from introduction, various types, technologies of hydrokinetic submersible turbines. Then we had a session on the selection of site for hydrokinetic submersible turbines, assessment of resource potential for those selected sites. The presentation was given by the expert Dr. Nawaz Akhtar. Then we had a brief session on the best practices and productive utilization of micro hydropower projects in northern areas of Pakistan by GIZ. Asif Farid. Then we had a presentation from Dr. Carl Comsi, Smart Hydro Germany, on the application of these technology in cooling canals of thermal power plants. So uh, with this, I would like to start this uh, today's session. I am extremely grateful to all our elite panel of experts, such as Mr. Asif Farid, Dr. Irfan Yusuf, Mr. Hassan Marwar, Dr. Carl Comsi, Mr. Tomaso Morbiato. Mr. Asim Shahzad and Umar Mukhtar for their enthusiasm and eager willingness to participate in our webinar. I shall introduce them in detail before the start of their relevant session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you will have the opportunity to ask questions to presenters by typing your questions or clicking to the raised hand option into the attendees pane of the main window of GoToWebinar software. You may also send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will also collect these and address them during the question answer session at the end of each presentation. Today we have a uh, today we have agenda which includes uh, first we will have a presentation by Dr. Mohammad Nawaz Akhtar on the planning for installation of hydrokinetic submersible turbines. Then we have a presentation from uh, sorry we have a short interview which was recorded earlier on commercial aspects of hydrokinetic submersible turbines by Mr. Trey Taylor from Verdant USA. Then we have a presentation on the simulation studies for the installation of multiple turbines by Mr. Asim Shahzad from Institute of Space Technology. Then later we would have a presentation on design concepts of hydrokinetic turbines and their performances in variable flows by Mr. Tommaso Morbiato of Wind City, Italy. After the break, we would have a session on the business perspective of hydrokinetic submersible turbines by Mr. Malik Nadeem Awan from Pakistan. And later at the last, we would have a policy challenges and regulatory framework session on the development of hydrokinetic turbines by Dr. Irfan Yusuf from Alternative Energy Development Board, Pakistan. At the last of the session, we would have a brief session on knowledge sharing. Uh, we would request all the participants to take part in that session by giving their comments, their reviews, and overall uh, recommendations to us. And we will wrap up today's session in the conclusion, recommendation, and closing of webinar in a short session. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, give mic to Ms. Dr. Akhtar Nawaz uh, for his presentation. Let me introduce Dr. Saab very briefly. Dr. Saab is a professional mechanical engineer with master's and PhD in hydrogen fuel cell technology. He had conducted the same study to assess the resource potential and planning for a demonstration project using, uh, using runoff river submersible water turbines. He has extensive experience in the designing, coordination, and fabrication, installation, and commissioning of power plants. His professional strengths are mechanical designing, engineering management, technical procurement, technical inspections, R&D in the areas of renewable technologies, especially fuel cell technology. He holds five publications in national and international journals and a lot of conference papers. So, Dr. Saab, uh, we would uh, now listen to you on your presentation of planning for installation of hydrokinetic submersible turbines. So, over to Dr. Saab now.
Doctor, are you listening to me? Yes. So you can share your screen and uh, continue with the presentation. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to all of the participants. I welcome you all from the SARC member states and all over the globe. And today we will share the planning phase for the installation of submersible turbine or similar projects. So, planning for installation of a submersible turbine, we have divided into seven topics and we will go through all like general planning and planning for procurement, planning for transportation, planning for installation and commissioning, including standard reliability test, planning for performance monitoring and operational life, planning for consensus building among stakeholders, plan, planning for provision of electricity to users, and general planning for the installation of five kilowatt submersible turbine, as we have already discussed yesterday, that we have a model turbine of five kilowatt developed by Smart Hydropower Germany. So, we have three sections. First is Upper Jehlam Canal. We have to consider that its running period is 11 months over the years and one month it remains shut down for cleaning and maintenance activities. Then we have to consider planning for annual shutdown because this is the only available time for working under the canal on the canal bed or under the bridges and that is planned is one month and it starts from 5th January of every year and the canal again continue running on 5th of February. So we have generally one month for any activity within the canal. So we have to plan our all activities accordingly. Number three, we have planned schedule of activities for the installation of this turbine at Jagu water level crossing in Upper Jelham Canal. And we have in planned it and presented in the form of Gantt chart and we can see it now accordingly. Now this is the Gantt chart, we have made it. So we spread all activities so that we can complete within one month and that is from 5th of January to 5th of February. So first activity is transportation of turbine to the site and that might be completed up to 1st of January. And then we have to mobilize the EPC contractor, which is engineering, procurement and construction contractor. And he has to mobilize and all along with his accessories, tools, equipments and whatever he needs, he has to manage on the site up to 4th of February. So canal will be shut down on 5th of February. So that time should be available for the installation activities. So we can see here that 5th of February to 5th of, uh, 5th of January to 5th of February, it is the shutdown and we show it through red color. So now the lowering of turbine into the canal might be completed up to 6th of February, 6th of January, sorry. And we should lower it with the help of mobile crane or whatever tools and tackles EPC contractor may utilize for this activity. And installation of the turbine holding structure should start from 7th of January to for completion up to 10th of January. And then installation of turbine may take up to two days and we have to complete all the installation of the turbine accordingly up to 12th of January. Then 
installation of power lines, circuit breaker, control panel, smart meter, etc. That activities may start from 13th of January to 16th of January. So in this time, we might complete all such activities. And hookup of control panel to the utility circuit breaker may take from 17th to 19th of January. So in this way, we have three days for this activity. Then pre-commissioning testing. So pre-commissioning testing activities, we have three days for this activity. So up to 22nd of January, this activity might be completed. Then is commissioning of the system. The whole system should be commissioned within two days. And that means that up to 24th of January, we have to complete all such activities. Then is uh, the canal start uh, then commissioning of the system and we have also two days for this activity and then test run uh, canal start running on 5th of February as per planned schedule so start of the system we will check that the system is running all as per plan so we have only one day for this activity then reliability test run will be checked and for this the 72 hour for this 72 hours we will check all the systems equipments and accessories as per planning they might be functioning normally and as expected up to the mark and we will continue recording up to 72 hours that up to 72 hours everything is as per plan or as expected from all the equipment systems and everything so if it is okay then handover and inauguration ceremony so on 15th of february we will hold an inauguration ceremony and the system will be handed over from the epc contractor to the owner of the turbine or system of the project so this way we have planned all activities to be completed within one month time and now the first activity for going to install a project a repair project in is a situation which is governed by Punjab government who has made Punjab Power Development Board to facilitate the implementation of power generation projects and power distribution arrangements in case of power sale to a private sector. So be reminded that up to now we have achieved a license from the Punjab government for only demonstration purpose. So presently, this turbine can be and will be installed for demonstration purpose only. So Punjab Power Development Board also pre-qualify the sponsors, both in case of raw site projects or solicited site projects. And this board, is also meant for to evaluate the bids of pre-qualified sponsors and issue letters of interest and letters of support to the successful sponsors. And is also to assess the sponsor project company in seeking necessary consents, permissions from various governmental agencies. They also help to negotiate the implementation agreements assessed in the negotiations relating to the water use licenses and assist the power producer or fuel supplier and provincial authorities in the negotiations, execution and administration of other agreements such as PPA, FSA and so on. <coughs> Sorry. The PPIB board 
is meant to coordinate with the federal government agencies and discourse NTDC for development of the power generation projects and to follow up and assist in the implementation and monitoring of the projects. Also, they help to take up such other matters as may be required for the promotion of power generation projects in the provinces. The hierarchy of implementation policy they have made, we have presented on the next slide. This is the hierarchy designed by the development of our projects under Punjab government authority. They have divided into two categories. They handle in different departments. First is any project, I, either it is wind, hydel, renewable, biomass, biogas, or like this, less than 50 megawatt. If the capacity of such project is less than 50 megawatt, they have a different department. And if the project capacity is greater than 50 megawatt, either it is fossil fuel, coal, gas, or hydel. They handle it through a different department. And this is the downside distribution of the projects and the flow chart that AEDB, that is Alternative Energy Development Board, PBIT, Punjab Board of Investment and Trade, and Punjab Power Development Board. So they handle it and assist in all activities. Either it is raw site or it is for registration available or purchase and submission of SOQ, evaluation, approval of PPIB and so on. And if the project is greater than 50 megawatt, that will be handled through PPIB. And it starts from solicited site and how the advertisement will go on how the receipt of pre-qualification requests, documents, and so that all activities should be organized. And for that activity, every activity they have given plenty of time and also fixed that in 30 days or 60 days or 15 days, whatever activities that should be completed to speed, to speed up the, all the activities and process should be organized and no undue late may come into action. So Punjab Irrigation Department has issued permission for the installation of above mentioned turbine for non-commercial utility at the designated site. And a copy of this permission letter, we can see here, they have issued for the demonstration activity only and no commercial aspect may be in it. So now, number two. This was the prerequisite we have discussed so far. Now, we will consider planning for procurement. So international limited tenders will be floated for the supply of hydro kinetic turbines for the whole canal, mentioning like specific parameters of the canal, and the required quantity. These things will be accordingly published and advertised. Quotations will be requested from following 44 hydrokinetic turbine manufacturers all over the world. First of all is Smart Hydropower GMB, a Germany whose turbine, model turbine we have in Pakistan. Number two is Thorpton Energy Services, UK. Number three is Alternative Hydro Solutions Limited, Canada. Number four is Energy Alliance, Russia. Number five, New Energy, Canada. Number six is Tidal Energy Private Limited, Australia. Seven is Lucid Energy Technologies. And number eight is Seabell International Company Limited, Japan. So in this way, we have Electric Energy Limited, UK, Green Tech Avenue, USA, Canada, and Germany, Kirloskar, Integrated Technologies Private Limited India, ACEP Alaska, Verdant Power USA, and so on. 
full list of 44 manufacturers and developers can be available so to save the time that is limited we will go on to next and if any one of you needs the full list we can send it to you by email later on so now we will see the criteria for the evaluation of quotations because when we receive the quotations we have to evaluate accordingly so we will consider following things to evaluate the most suitable turbine for this site first is maximum power output at the given velocity of water in the canal and number two cut in velocity number three is cut out velocity it means okay, what minimum velocity will be at which the turbine starts functioning and cut out velocity means the maximum velocity of water at which the turbine may stop working for safety of the turbine so then is efficiency curve means at what velocity level how much output power will be available through which turbine then is price also very important parameter then ease of installation how much infrastructure is required and all other difficulties may be involved then stability how much stable is turbine in this situation useful life either 15 years 20 years 25 years how much we have to consider then the performance history we might like to know that its history how it performed in which areas in which conditions and how much power it produced so far and what is the experience of the owners of the turbine or the project where it was initially installed then reference projects how many projects it was utilized and financial aspects through this turbine and after sales service they experienced number three planning for transportation transportation of the turbine from the dry port to the site of installation will be carried out through the expert transport company and unloading and transportation to the designated site of installation will be carried out by epc contractor using mobile crane number four planning for installation and commissioning including standard reliability test installation plan to be provided by the manufacturer and will be followed accordingly number two is commissioning of the turbine will be carried out strictly in line with the instructions provided by the manufacturer then after commissioning of the turbine a 72 hour standard reliability run test will be carried out as per SOP made by isco that is islamabad electric supply corporation pursuant to their standard practices we will go into detail next now we came to know that what administrative procedures in the project may be uh, followed that we have to abide by accordingly actually administrative procedures clarify the role of all participants in the organization once the role of these parties is identified a plan for the turnover of equipment systems from the contractor to the owner should be developed during number one schedules of construction number two completion dates and number three testing so through these three phases we have to identify and accordingly organize the administrative procedures that may come across among all the stakeholders which are three generally first is project owner or owner of the turbine number two is project engineer and third is the epc contractor so all the activities among all these three stakeholders they will be defined and administered accordingly 
so we have to account for all such procedures number one owner of the turbine or project owner is usually the operator and provides also operating personnel and maintenance personnel that may coordinate so provides participate in installation and commissioning program the owners review administrative construction installation pre-operational and operational programs and schedules accordingly number two they witness testing activities as necessary in support of the commissioning program also they provide coordination with off-site operating dispatching and transportation and agencies as required they also accept equipment and systems for operation during the pre-commissioning testing phase number five they also accept equipment systems and will facilitate subsequent to successful testing of these items and provide final acceptance of the project number six they operate all permanent equipment and turbine to support the startup schedule and make final decision in areas of disputes relating to test activities performed during the testing programs so these activities will be handled accordingly by the owner or its representatives now the second major stakeholder is the epc contractor because a lot of work is to be performed by this stakeholder and epc contractor provides first engineering of the project number two procurement he might plan organize provide support through all procurement process number three construction that it is to be wholly taken up by the epc contractor and number four is installation activities so this activity is also to be carried out by epc contractor then is testing equipment and systems under the contract witnessed by project engineer and owner because he has to coordinate and make all decisions as per administrative procedures and under the guidance and coordination of these two the contractor will perform following all engineering activities like selection of the turbine and associated luxury auxiliary systems number two coordinate procurement activities and transportation of all of the equipments from the dry port to the installation site and he has to prepare he has to prepare gantt charts and schedules of all sub activities from start to completion of the project and he has to perform commissioning and testing of the equipment number 6 he has to record test data results during construction installation and pre commissioning testing and will distribute to the project engineer and incorporate into the system turnover package number 7 epc contractor has to implement tagging and work clearances on systems and equipment number 8 epc contractor has to give schedule of completion of the construction work and test activities to support the overall commissioning program number 9 EPC contractor provide the project engineer with status of contractor furnished equipment and systems deficiency list items as well he has to perform pre commissioning testing on contractor furnished equipment and systems in accordance with test requirements contained within the contract now the third stakeholder in a project is project engineer so project engineer typically provides the design documents 
to install and test the turbine based on the manufacturer's recommendations. And project engineer provide all engineering documents and information necessary for construction, completion, and testing of the turbine. He has to assist other engineers on site to provide assistance on design and engineering programs accordingly. So these are the three main stakeholders who work in coordination with each other. Now we consider the pre-commissioning test. Number one, pre-commissioning test is to ensure all tests and checks necessary for each system to be functional before startup of commissioning testing of the overall integrated turbine commences. Number two, the purpose of these procedures is to verify that each system performs in accordance with design requirements. Number three, <coughs> excuse me, commissioning test procedures will be used during the final phase of the plant startup. Number four, these procedures outline tests to be performed on turbine generator and controls, voltage regulator, excitation systems, relays, and protection equipment, and the various modes of starting, loading, and stopping each unit. Number five, this phase will be coordinated with the vendor's representatives supplying the turbine and with the operating authority for this turbine. So this is pre-commissioning test. And following tests will be performed in support of the commissioning program and in keeping with the schedules for pre-operational and operational testing. Number one, unit alignment. Number two, rotational runout checks. Number three, rotor diameter measurement. Number four, rotor roundness measurement. Number five, stator bore diameter measurement. Number six, stator roundness measurement. Air gap. Air gap measurement. Number eight, verification of temperature devices. Number nine, current transformer polarity checks. Number 10, stator and rotor winding resistance measurements. Number 11, open circuit saturation test. Number 12, short circuit test. Number 13, phase sequence test. Number 14, heat run over speed test and rejection tests. So then we come to commissioning of the turbine. Installation plan for the turbine provided by the manufacturer will be followed and commissioning of the turbine will be carried out strictly in line with the instructions provided by the turbine manufacturer. In case of unavailability of commissioning procedures for this turbine or any other following tests will be conducted. Number one, speed no load rejection. It means when there is no load on the turbine, so turbine will reject the power. Then number two, 25% load acceptance and rejection. It means apply the 25% load on the turbine and same as then reject it and turbine should be normal. Then 50% load acceptance and rejection. Then 75% load acceptance and rejection and then 100% load acceptance and rejection. It means if 100% load is applied, it, everything should be running normal. And if 100% load is rejected, then everything will be running normally and then normally shut down. And number seven is after the successful installation and commission of the turbine, a 72 hour standard liability run test will be carried out as per made by ISCO pursuant to their standard practices. Now we will see what it is actually. For this test, the whole system will be operated continuously for 72 hours and all critical parameters mentioned in the table we will see in the next slide means voltage, current, power factor, power, frequency, RPM, stator winding, temperature, etc. will be recorded after every hour and daily signed by EPC contractor, manager construction and owner and client of the turbine. If due to any reason turbine go into shutdown, then again 72 hours will start from zero hour to confirm reliability in continuous operation. So now we'll see what it is. Now this is the acceptance form. 
and plan design procurement and construction and it will be signed by all the stakeholders here is date and all required description now this is the log it is to be filled for 72 hours from zero hour to 72 hours it will be recorded and signed by epc contractor and manager construction and client or owner of the turbine so here we see that how face-to-face -face voltage face-to-face -face current power factor and total power frequency and kvr and rpm stator winding temperature and general temperature turbine vrg temperature and grid voltage all are recorded for 72 hours and signed by every stakeholder number five planning for performance monitoring and operational life number one the plan for the periodic performance monitoring and preventive maintenance of the turbine will be adopted as supplied by the manufacturer of the turbine number two uh, Dr. Sir, uh, excuse me may i intervene uh, uh, Dr. Sir, you have uh, less than three minutes to, to finish your presentation uh, i would request you to just speed your uh, make swift uh, presentation now okay so these are the steps we have to consider during the planning phase that how we will do what activity and in which manner so number six is planning for consensus building among stakeholders this is also very important following eight are the stakeholders for this project or in other projects maybe like similar first is sarkanaji center who has planned this activity number two is ist institute of space technology who is academic institute and also coordinating in this project then is ms Al Awan General Trading Corporation, Country Head, Smart Hydro Power, and owner of the turbine so far. Number four is Department of Irrigation, Government of the Punjab, being the owner of the canal. Then is Punjab Energy Development Board, who is also administrator authority. Then is ISCO, Islamabad Electric Supply Company. Then is Ministry of Environment, Government of the Punjab, and representatives of the local area. These are the eight stakeholders. And sharing of this study report with all the above mentioned stakeholders will be carried out and also a one day dissemination workshop will be arranged at the site and like all stakeholders may be invited to build the consensus and finally is planning for provision of electricity users so luckily we have office building of hydro monitoring station with the connected load of three kilowatt just at a distance of 100 meters from the uh, site of uh, installation of turbine Number two, the output of the installed turbine may be consumed within this public sector office. Number three, in the premises of Jagu Head, there are a number of installations whose security and monitoring activities demand uninterrupted electrical power supply, which can be met through the output power from this turbine for 11 months annually. Number four, for the coming projects on this site, electricity consumers all around the area facing more than 12 hours load shedding and that they will be eager to utilize this electricity produced from the turbine we are planning to install. And the beneficiaries may also include small scale industrial units. So this is all over regarding planning phase of this project. And I welcome all of you if you have any questions and thank you for giving the time and listening and sparing this you know, your position time for this activity and your interest in this regard now the mic is to the mr s and javed thank you very much sir uh, for your very comprehensive and uh, detailed presentation on a very important aspect um, related to this technology which is planning and installation of hydrokinetic submersible turbine so i would briefly uh, recap what docs have said about something about the general planning which included detailed gantt chart prepared then he also spoke something about the local government licensing and approval required from agencies for uh, implementation agreements ppas environmental approvals then he touched the topic of uh, procurement planning which included uh, detailed tender documents and the requirements of the canals and the manufacturers of the international turbines uh, manufacturers then he touched uh, on the topic of uh, criteria for evaluation of these uh, tenders which included the parameters such as velocity price stability system life performances then planning installation phase includes the um, uh, standardized uh, reliability test 
uh, on the administrative procedure side dr sir spoke about the contractor to owner shipment procedures completion dates testing of those turbines then he spoke something about the responsibilities of the owner epc contractor the commissioning of turbines and later at the last stage he spoke something about the planning for the consensus among the uh, relevant stakeholders which included the uh, uh, provisional government authorities and the uh, relevant uh, manufacturers and uh, the owner of the turbines so dr sir thank you very much uh, for your presentation it was uh, wonderful to listen to you and a very detailed topic so um, the question has arrived from uh, one of the expert which uh, says uh, he has not uh, mentioned his name but the question is which parameters are measured in hydrokinetic turbines in the reliability test run yes so generally <clears throat> for the stability of the turbine the first thing is the voltage then is current and the variations if any due to the fluctuations in the flow of this stream or due to unbalance created in any way in the turbine generator that may come out in the form of these two parameters first is voltage then is current and third is the frequency if the velocity of water varies it affects all three parameters so we need constant frequency and however we will monitor and also uh, made it constant from the rest of the electronics through power conditioning unit but for the stability of the turbine we should know and monitor and close observation on it that how much the load variations are coming out in our uh, display panel voltage are sta stable current is same and frequency what happens with it so this shows the stable performance of the turbine thank you very much dr sab uh, for your very detailed answer so we have a question from department of renewable energy under ministry of economic affairs bhutan the question is from chotan duba who has uh, asked a question that apart from requesting the quotation from the manufacturer was the visit of to the manufacturing unit the form the part of the activity of the developer as well so uh, to my knowledge dr sab correct me if i am wrong but normally these uh, projects uh, due to the simplicity of these projects and due to the small scale of these turbines the manufacturers are normally not required to visit the site in advance so all of these things are uh, done by the uh, project developer themselves so am i right dr sir in this one yes you are right okay perfect so i think we have answered the question from uh, chotan duba so we move on to our next question which is in case some canal and rivers do not does not have any dry days so is it possible to do installation uh, of these turbines in those areas where they, they don't have any dry days yes the type of turbine we have in pakistan that is made by smart hydro this model which is called the floating type submersible turbine the beauty of this turbine is this that in any condition on any duration this turbine can be installed during the running of the canal or river through the help of a mobile crane or any other facility over there this turbine can be installed anywhere in any location with the help of a mobile crane or similar uh, provision uh, during the running of canal or river thank you very much dr sab uh, for your very detailed replies i think we have some more questions but uh, due to shortage of time we will shift these questions into the uh, in, at the end of the uh, our session which will be a knowledge sharing session so we urge again all the participants to ask questions to write questions back to us we are going to address them during this uh, hopefully in this uh, se uh, webinar session so dr sab again thank you very much for your very detailed presentation and i thank you very much sir welcome assalam so uh, ladies and gentlemen now according to our schedule our next uh, uh, schedule is on the commercial aspects of hydrokinetic submersible turbines and uh, the uh, the main person responsible is mr trey taylor from worldend usa and mr trey taylor has had a done a pre recorded interview with renewable energy world magazine 
and uh, we are going to we had requested him for the short interview we thought that it's it would be very informative for all the participants and the interview is available with us we would like to play this interview right now for you so if you have any questions we would then send these question to mr uh, trey taylor and he hopefully he would be replying us back in one to two days time so now i would shortly introduce mr trey taylor uh, Mr. Trey Taylor is the director of Verdant Power and president of Verdant Power International Incorporation. Uh, Trey Taylor co-founded the Verdant Power, a New York-based company in 2000. Uh, previously, he founded the Interactive Marketing Institute working with AT&T, Oracle, Compaq, Kodiak, Deloitte, and Toshi. Uh, Baltimore Gas and Electric Company and Price Waterhouse World Utilities Group. Prior to that, he held senior management positions at Edison Electric Institute, ITT Corporation, and Procter & Gamble. He currently serves on the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Advisory Committee for the U.S. Department of Commerce and New York City's Green Expo Initiative Advisory Council. He also served on the Board of Directors for the Hydro Research Foundation, chaired the R&D Committee for the National Hydropower Association, and has helped charter the Ocean Renewable Energy Coalition. He is also a founding member of the American Council on Renewable Energy and recently founded Anchor Coalition, a project of the Ocean Foundation. So a very well experienced and very elite expert in uh, in the field of hydropower sector. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Trailer, for uh, agreeing to provide your interview to us. So ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to listen to Mr. Trey Taylor's interview. Hi, I'm Russell Bragg, Managing Editor of Power Engineering Magazine. We're here in Long Beach for the Renewable Energy World Conference and Expo. With me here today is Trey Taylor. He is the co-founder and president of Burden Power. Trey, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Uh, uh, Trey, your company recently received the first ever uh, license from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission for a, a, a pilot, a tidal power uh, pilot project. East River. Can you uh, can you talk a little bit, describe that project for us? I'm happy to. It's uh, it's quite significant because it's a historical event to receive the very first uh, commercial license for a Title V project in the United States. Significant in the sense that it's taken us nearly 10 years to get to this point. The licensing process itself is pretty short. It's about one year. And the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has been wonderful in their support of this new technology and process in the sense that they streamlined the process. However, preceding all of this was about six years of permitting and environmental studies to the point where we are today. A lot of work, a lot of trials and tribulations to get to this point. Can you talk a little bit, a little bit about the, some of those trials and tribulations, the testing that you needed to do to get to this point? Yes, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't easy because it's a combination of not only having uh, the money to be able to do the right kinds of tests, and we we began with a technology that was actually uh, approved of back in 1995 by the Department of Energy, and we put our team and resources behind advancing that technology through a three-phased testing project in New York, beginning. In Okay. To working for a high speed TV designed, built, and put into the water. So part of that is a, is a pretty onerous regulatory process we have to go through. United States. Um, and that's why I think that's one of the biggest reasons, along with money. Uh, where we were lucky is 
working very closely with universities because the original design came from New York University and New York Power Authority. So that helped us get to where we are. And then secondly, the support we're getting from the state of New York itself, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. So it's a combination of the support from the city of New York, the state of New York, the universities and funding. Got it. Now that's not easy to bring those kind of coalitions together. Tell me a little bit about the turbine technology itself. How does it work? Uh, our turbines uh, look very much like wind turbines. Yeah. Now, the wind industry really never took off until all the technologies began to converge on three-bladed upstream axial flow rotors. Right. What we have is a three-bladed downstream axial flow rotor. And what we use, the nose cone, the front part, is to orientate the turbine toward the water current. So in the case of a tide in East River, and East River, by the way, is a tidal channel that connects Long Island Sound with the Atlantic Ocean. So the turbine is able, and a passively, like a weather vane, is able to turn around and get the ebb and the flood tides. So that's how our system is designed to work. And then you spoke at a session earlier today, a very well-attended uh, session about ocean tidal stream power. You mentioned that the turbines in the East River would be offset. And how many turbines are we talking about, and, and why would you offset them? What's the, talk a little bit about the design of that. How we how we came to that conclusion was inadvertently. Yes. Uh, we had used some existing modeling based on wind turbines on how to space these turbines. Yes. And, and here's what I mean by that. The kinetic energy in the water current flow, if we're taking a percentage of that energy out, you need to allow enough distance for that water current to restore itself before you take another percentage right, out. Right. Uh, otherwise, it's like the path of least resistance. That water current will start moving around your turbines, and you're killing the goose's leg, the golden egg of, of, of new energy. So what we, so here's what happened. Uh, our first six turbines we put into the water were three rows of two. Now, the, the blade design is absolutely beautiful, and I can elaborate on that if you like later. But the materials we used weren't strong enough, so our blades broke, and it's a slow cascading effect. So we had one rotor break, one turbine break. Then a second one, and then two days later, the next row. So, what we're able to do is see the effect of one turbine on another, and then one row on another. And by that, we realized how we better can arrange these turbines so we're not interfering that water current with stronger rotors. That led to our new design of deployment, which is putting these on a tri frame. So, we know the exact distance from side to side and floor to aft. But each tri frame then is offset from one another with the proper distance to allow the water current to flow and not. Speed, well, clearly a lot has been written about your success in East River. Can you talk a little bit about uh, other places where you plan to deploy and test this uh, technology? Well, we are. We're looking uh, we're up in Canada right now with the support of the Canadian government we're looking at a project on the St. Lawrence River. Now, what's nice about river projects is the water current is always flowing. Uh, the beauty of tide, although it's intermittent, has a capacity factor between 30 and 40 percent. It has a very high capacity value. And by that, I mean the reliability and predictability. Uh, Con Ed would look at this as a source of distributed generation yeah. and liking it because they could look at their clocks and a tidal chart. They know exactly when the tide yeah. and power is coming on, when it's going off for the next 200 years. That's wow. predictability of tides. In the rivers, there we have a capacity factor of maybe 60 to 70 percent. Water currents always flowing in the right situations. And so that can act as a base load dispatchable power. And so there's a real value for it. Hydrokinetic uh, applications and river systems. So another project is in Canada. What we'll have are two. We'll have a a project that sh in the East River, which shows a distributed generation, the high capacity value, and then we have a project in the St. Lawrence River, which shows base dispatchable power using the very same systems, but base load power, base load power, because of the high capacity factor. Um, well, I'm sure there have probably been studies about the uh, tidal power potential worldwide. Do you have any stance on that? Uh, several good figures on that. Uh, the Ocean Energy Council predicted that there's, or estimated there's about 63,000 megawatts of tidal power in the world. Now that's just tidal power, right? If you then look at river potential, right. uh, it's, when you add the two together, there's probably a potential of close to 250,000 megawatts of potential hydrokinetic power around the world. Incredible. Clearly there's a lot of promise, there's a lot of progress being made. You're one of the few companies that have had real uh, success, and we sure do appreciate your time and insight, and we look forward to seeing uh, all the uh, results of all your hard work. Thanks so much for being here. And thank you very much. I appreciate the time.
so it was a uh, wonderful listening to mr tray taylor uh, actually we had some uh, problem with the video and the audio uh, uh, issue but we would request all the participants that if you are really interested in uh, listening to mr tray taylor uh, interview short interview uh, you can visit our website at the end of today's webinar we are going to upload all the presentations and along with this short interview to our website more uh, at the earliest by monday morning so you can go access this interview if you have any questions uh, specific to mr tray taylor you can send us back uh, your question we will address them through uh, reply, through his reply later otherwise if you have any questions you can send us uh, those questions in text in email so we will address those so we have like a uh, one question from one of the participant uh, uh, we would like to address this question on uh, one of the participants has asked the question that what is the most critical aspect of planning for selection of the site and with me i have um, uh, dr shweb ahmed uh, the acting director of sark energy center i would request dr saab to quickly give us a short uh, uh, reply to this question uh, dr saab over to you sir all right thank you ahsan uh, well as you asked that okay So my answer should be quick so uh, i would say the most critical thing is the selection of the site okay and while selection of the site what are the i mean more, again i mean inside the selection of site what are the most critical criterions to be looked into they are the water resource water speed and the availability of the water and uh, also the water should be clean enough so that clean means they should not have any foreign objects or any debris in it and secondly the user of the electricity produced should be close enough okay this will help to have Uh, keep our electrical system or the laying of the electrical wiring and other things it will help us to keep that electrical system more simple so these are the two criteria which should be looked into while planning to install any submersible turbine all right thank you very much i hope i am very clear uh thank you very much doctor for your very uh, brief uh, reply to the question actually we uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, mr asim shahzad and uh, he is going to uh, get online in just a few one to two minutes time so in the meanwhile i will like to throw one more question to dr shweb ahmed just to take the opportunity of this time available to us so doctor we have a question from uh, mr namiz musafir uh, who is uh, from sri lanka and uh, he has asked a question that you mentioned about stakeholders what were the social and environmental safeguards made and social and environmental concerns clearances addressed and i hope he is concerning the same technology or the same project sir all right asian thank you very much uh, well first of all uh, my reply has two portions to it first portion is what was done during this study okay please remember this study was a prototype project it was a prototype and it, we did it uh, as a role model for actual deployment right so in doing so uh, we had a very very safe conditions there and because we are doing for for the first time so we wanted to have very close to ideal type conditions in which uh, these concerns were i mean the least both they created least bothersome for us because the user was a government department uh, all the installation and the canal was also administered by the government department and as we had the backing of government of pakistan while doing this study and this prototype installation so uh, these we did not really face these problem however when the general public or the other people will do it in the real real life in real time uh, in that case of, of course this is going to be a problem first of all uh, whosoever whosoever has the control over the water resource 
some arrangement must be made with him right if the owner of the turbine and the owner of the water resource are the same then it's not a problem but if you are trying to use a water resource who is under somebody else naturally some some sort of arrangement has to be made in terms of whether the electricity produced or whether in some in shape of some rent to him or whatever secondly uh, in case there are some uh, more than i mean some population around the point of installation and if you are trying to give uh, uh, electricity to one of the users and not to uh, the others right this may create some sort of rift between that small community who who is either willing to use this electricity and some of them may be uh, may be trying to i mean go negative or go against this type of installation uh, that these are the two major things which i could foresee that okay these could be the social aspects which should be looked into however uh, their environmental impacts or environmental things are so negligible probably they they will not be have any major impact on the overall project but in case depending upon site to site if there is any so whatever the nature of that uh, environmental impact is i think the remedial actions can be taken uh, then and there whatever the uh, situation is thanks uh thank you very much uh, dr sir for a very detailed answer on the social and the environmental aspect uh, i hope uh, that mr namir musafir has been satisfied with the reply if however you still feel that you need to get more detail out of this uh, you can send us your query or you can send us back to back question and we would definitely address them during this webinar if we find any slot of question answer session or otherwise we could reply you back uh, later on after one to two days time so in the meanwhile i think that uh, we would uh, we have some difficulty um, uh, connecting with mr rasim shahzad sometime uh, all the participants must appreciate that uh, the getting online with these things take some time a little bit issues of technical and uh, technical nature so we would uh, we would continue with our one more question we have received from the participant and i would throw this question to uh, uh, dr sir uh, dr amar sir uh, dr sir uh, there is a question on what what should be included or what is included in the pre commissioning testing i think this is a very important question before the installation of a turbine uh, any pre commissioning testing required for this project like in case of bigger project definitely there is required pre commissioning testing so are these projects required these kind of uh, testing or not over to dr sir all right thank you sir thank you for uh, putting this question uh, first of all let me clarify that of course pre commissioning if carried out is beneficial and is one of the requirements but at the same time i would like to mention that because the nature of the technology and the because the small size of the technology please remember this pre commissioning is not as complicated or as big as it is in some bigger projects so please take my word that this pre commissioning is quite easy however in pre commissioning two things which i which in my point of view i think is more 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 uh, uh, critical they are first of all whatever the installation structure you are making and whatever the installation requirements are they should be ensured that they are uh, strong enough and there shouldn't be any weakness in that secondly in pre commissioning please do check all your electrical system because this is electrical system is outside the canal and there is uh, this involves laying of the cables laying of the let's say converter and these i mean few more components so please make sure during pre commissioning that your electrical system is fully uh, installed it has all the requisite components it is fully secured 
and things like that. So these are the two things which are critical in pre-commissioning. Rest of the things, uh, I mean, do not carry that much weightage in my point of view. Thank you, Essen. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Uh, thank you for, very much for your uh, detailed reply on the uh, specific query raised by one of the participants. And we urge all the participants again and again to uh, feel free to ask any questions, any basic question, any expert question. We have the panel for you. They are going to reply to those queries uh, very shortly. And in the meanwhile, I think we have Mr. Asim Shahzad uh, available with us. Uh, we are going to check if uh, he's available. So uh, let me go towards his presentation topic. Uh, in the meanwhile, our IT team is going to connect him uh, uh, with us. So the topic of Mr. Asim Shahzad in the, in the simulation studies for the installation of multiple turbines. Uh, this Mr. Asim Shahzad was one of the uh, experts who worked on this project with Dr. Akhtar Nawaz uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the study. So I will briefly uh, make an introduction of Mr. Asim Shahzad. Mr. Asim Shahzad is a faculty member of the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics Institute of Space Technology, Islamabad. He had conducted the simulation studies for the installation of multiple submersible turbines <coughs> in Ghazi Barota Canal, as well as participated in related activities regarding installation of submersible turbines. Uh, so I think uh, the, uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad is ready for giving the presentation. I would hand over to Mr. Asim Shahzad now. Uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad, uh, am I audible to you? Ji, sir. You are audible. Yes, I think uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad is audible. His, his presentation is visible to us, uh, but I may request him to maybe turn on his mic. Uh, Mr. Asim, if you can listen uh, sir, to me, please can you turn on your mic? We cannot listen to you now. Uh, sir, can you listen to me as I am able to hear... Uh, Hello. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the meanwhile, since he is uh, uh, trying to uh, correct his microphone, I would like to urge uh, the participant. Uh, there were some uh, queries related to how they are going to ask questions. Some of the participants were a bit um, uh, confused as to how to ask the questions. So, you have the opportunity to ask questions to presenters by typing your questions or clicking to the raised hand option into the attendees pane of the main window of GoToWebinar software. Once you are connected with the software, it's uh, it's a, uh, pretty say, similar to what kind of software we normally use, uh, like uh, Skype or Viber. So you have this uh, option available. You can just uh, click the raised hand option, and then we will. Uh, I will come to know that you want to ask question, and I will ask the question directly from the presenter. Otherwise, what you could do uh, is there is a so chat uh, window at the below but, side of the software. But, but. So I think you can also um, type in your question in that chat box. And we are going to address that, and I'm going to Hello. Um, uh, Hello. inform all the for the consumption of all the uh, participants that uh, the presentations will <laughs> all be uploaded. The short interview will be uploaded on our uh, official website, which is www.sarkenergy.org, and you can uh, also send your query clarification later on. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Asim, for your uh, agreeing to participate in this webinar. I am very afraid and. Uh, I'm apology in front, but you have some uh, limited time available. Yeah, uh, we are, we are. Our next uh, presenter is going to get online in next 15 minutes. So over to you for uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Asim. Uh, I guess uh, we uh, the audience cannot hear you. Um, I think uh, I think there is some kind of an uh, uh, technical uh, difficulty going on with Mr. Asim Shahzad's uh, uh, computer. Uh, 
uh, let me uh, check out with him for a minute in the meanwhile uh, we have some uh, we have some more questions uh, from the audience so let's address them till we have uh, mr asim shahzad online uh, mr asim shahzad is going to uh, correct his uh, problem so uh, uh, over to dr shaheb ahmed sir uh, sir uh, dr uh, akhtar nawaz earlier spoke about the uh, environmental approvals and uh, the administrative approvals required from the relevant agencies like uh, government bodies and Uh, the honors so do, do you see the same type of difficulties faced in this technology comparable to the bigger projects like dams and run of river projects just to have a, your view on that one over to doubt sir all right thank you as sir uh, well uh, knowing the size of the turbines and the type of uh, i mean their installation and their uh, use in my point of view uh, although these things do exist but they are so minimal that one need not to be worry about these things right however in case these exist on a very specific site right those should be addressed then and there depending upon the, the nature of whatever the objection has been raised but generally this technology uh, has a its application in a very very small sizes which is like say 5 kilowatt at the most 10 kilowatts so in those cases these things are not as big or these are not as serious as they are in case you, if you are going to have a, a let's say micro or medium size uh, hydro turbine installation which i mean i would say any, anything which is more than 50 kilowatt or 200 kilowatt or say so in this technology and the sizes we are talking about in this webinar they are so small uh, so that the seriousness of those environmental permissions and those things they are very very minimal but of course these things have to be catered for if there is any requirement thank you uh, thank you very much uh, dr shweb ahmed uh, for a very Uh, nice reply on the <clears throat> aspect of the environmental approvals and the administrative approvals required for this technology so i guess we are also we are still facing difficulty connecting with the uh, mr asim shahzad uh, i think uh, yeah, we would have some time uh, connecting with him in the meanwhile i would uh, urge again the participants to take this as an opportunity and ask as many questions as you want uh, to know more about the technology and the uh, Uh, application of this technology in the perspective of uh, specifically sark member states so uh, um, let me take this opportunity myself to uh, throw a question to uh, dr akhtar nawaz sahib uh, dr akhtar nawaz sahib is sitting with me so dr sahib what do you think uh, uh, poses the uh, financial implication or the cost uh, cost of the turbines uh, relevant to this uh, technology do you think the cost will come down with a period of time since this is a very novel technology a very new one and Uh, the cost are period, still the i mean the payback period is uh, very amazing and very astounding but uh, do you see that in future the cost will come down with the help of uh, indigenous development or indigenous manufacturing over to dr sir yes thank you mr asan of course the cost of the turbine will come down and gradually as the commercial manufacturing commercial installations increases with time the cost will definitely come down even we have this observed the swart hydro has 50% of the turbine at present the prices they experienced so far within 8 years of time so now the more and more companies are coming into this business and the exploration of more sites are done in the coming years so with this as the as commercialization of these turbines will go on prices will come down as the manufacturing and the number of companies will increase with time day and day and this will also exploit the new areas of development associated with this technology and with this the availability of associated components and materials will be available throughout the world and the local manufacturing trading installation will speed up so this will decrease the cost of production transportation 
installation and commercialization as well. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sap, uh, uh, for your uh, reply to that question. So we have one more question. We would uh, keep uh, asking the question. We have a lot of questions being asked by the participant. So we would take this as an opportunity to keep going on with this question answer session till we see if we could get connected with Mr. Asim Shehzad. In the meanwhile, uh, Dr. Sap, uh, there is a question from uh, the from India. Uh, Mr. Sharma has asked a question that. What do you see the potential of hydrokinetics uh, uh, turbines in India? Uh, we uh, know that they also have the same type of canal systems in uh, Pakistan. And um, uh, I, I, in my opinion, I mean, uh, from a layman uh, point of view, I think there, there must be a huge potential for uh, generation of electricity through these canals and these rivers. So over to Dr. Shweta Ahmed Saab for his views on uh, potential of hydrokinetics in India, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, uh, I would like to say, yes, there is a good potential for these technologies uh, to be deployed in India because straightway, uh, whole of the Indian Punjab have a very good canal system. So, or naturally, that is uh, most suitable for this type of technology. Other than the Indian Punjab, there are many other areas and most of the India has good, I mean, good canals or uh, small uh, low speed uh, nullas right so this technology holds a good potential into that apart from india as well uh, in other uh, far countries as well the, it holds uh, good potential for that so uh, i think i think it, it has fairly good potential but remember uh, is potential we do not consider it in terms of the electricity produced because this technology is for the for the small applications so in those applications wherever the uh, population is very scattered and it's distributed near or near or close to the canals and the rivers and they link the national grid to that area is difficult so in all those cases, this technology will prove very, very useful. All right. Thanks, Asim. Thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, I think I, I would like to interconnect this with another question. We have uh, just received a question from a uh, delegate of uh, Bhutan. He has asked a question that how do you address the variation in velocity flow speeds of different canals for the same order of turbine? Uh, to specifically uh, redefine the question, I think he meant by that, is it that one turbine can be installed in all the sites or do you have to be uh, designing the turbines based on specific sites uh, over to dr shayda all right thank you uh, i think it's a very good question and uh, many people may be having this thing in their mind please remember uh, the overall usage or overall installation of this technology is in two phases one is the turbine itself which is inside the canal which is responsible to generate the electricity and secondly it's electrical system which will take this generated electricity to the user but in that format which is useful for the user right in the electrical system there is a component which is which will stabilize whatever the output is coming if the voltage or the power is going down Right? So electrical system can compensate for that type of a thing. And electrical system can be different from depending upon the uh, whatever the output we are getting from uh, from a particular site. Right? In case if there is a requirement to have the backups to cover up the electrical variations, maybe a small battery can do that. Uh, or otherwise electronically also that is possible but of course whatever you add on to it system it will it slightly increases your cost as well and the complexity of the system but i agree they are means and uh, technical ways to compensate for the variation in the speed and the variation in the output of the uh, submersible turbine thank you Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so let me get back to Mr. Asim if he is uh, available. Mr. Asim, can you hear me now? Uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad, uh, am I audible to you? Yes, 
हेलो जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम यस सर आई कैन हियर यू आसिफ केदार फाइनली वी गो वी कॉट यू सर सो मिस्टर आसिफ यू आर ऑन यस सो आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू बी वेरी ब्रीफ इन योर प्रेजेंटेशन यू हैव टू फिनिश इट इन 10 टू 12 मिनट्स टाइम वी हैव ऑलरेडी वी आर ऑलरेडी बिहाइंड द स्केड्यूल सो इफ यू कैन क्विकली गो अहेड विद योर प्रेजेंटेशन सर I think now you may be Thank able you. to share your presentation now. <coughs> so, uh, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Please go ahead, sir. Assalamualaikum. I just start with the name of Allah, and um, so I hope all these sessions were uh, great and uh, informative. So I would just try to uh, my emphasis on the uh, modeling and simulation studies of submersible water turbine and why do we need to actually simulate the submersible turbine in an um, open canal. Uh, so actually, as you all know, the technical specification of a smart hydro turbine, which was uh, available to us thanks to Mr. Nadeem Saab, who imported this turbine from Germany to Islamabad, and before installing it in a canal, we ran some simulations to verify the output and the flow characteristics of this turbine. So, what we did is, we actually made a CAD model of this turbine, which was the first part, and which was the difficult part. As we have to take many measurements, and we use 3D scanners for the blade modeling of this turbine, and we modeled different parts of this turbine. So, the challenge that this involved in this was to precisely model each and every part of this turbine. as it was difficult and it was a really challenging task to model the debris protector and propeller and then the meshing of this whole turbine was a difficult part after the meshing would we want our solutions to have the maximum fidelity and to represent the real life conditions and we have to cater for the solution instabilities arising from numerical dissipation numerical dis portions during the simulation of this turbine so we modeled this propeller of the smart hydro power turbine using the 3d scanning techniques and finally we were able to uh, make this propeller these are the different views of the propeller and the dynamo The connecting dots. So we made uh, different uh, parts individually, and then we assembled these parts of the turbine together. <laughs> then the diffusers. Base plates, floats, and the debris protector. so it took us around 6 months to make a cad model of this turbine as accurate as possible and after several iterations we were able to uh, make mimic the actual cad model and after this cad model we actually modeled the whole section of a turbine um, and a flow to mean the bag box in which the turbine is is actually mimicking the water so it has different conditions different input conditions like from this wall here as my cursor is this wall is the water inlet wall and the back portion is the outlet wall 
and the up, lower wall is a friction surface which is uh, which will represent actually the, the bed of a river and the side walls are also the, the stationary walls but the upper wall is a moving wall which is which is representing a flow a moving flow so these are the dimensions the section is 18 meter wide 9 meter in height these are the dimensions of uh, Kazi Brotha Canal. And we assume a 30 meter long section. So the water will enter from here. And we will we would be able to see the results of flowing water on the turbine. We were able to calculate the drag force the water will exert on the turbine and the velocity which velocity variations and the pressure variations throughout the cross section of the turbine and in and of the lateral distance in which the flow will recover its properties like how much after the turbine the flow will recover its velocity the pressure and other flow parameters basically the aim was the aim of the study was to determine if we are installing multiple turbines in a row and uh, if we are installing multiple turbines in a row how after how much distance we should install the second turbine so with this simulation what we were aimed to do is to determine the lateral distance after the turbine from which the flu flow will recover its parameters and its velocity okay this is the flow domain again so we what we what the most important part after the modeling after the CAD modeling of the turbine was the meshing of the turbine and we were supposed to capture a high fidelity solution and better result for that what we did is we mod we mesh the the whole flow domain different section of the turbine were of different thickness and different uh, geometrical pro have different geometrical properties so we have to mesh the individual each individual section of the turbine with uh, as much accuracy as possible so basically this picture shows the mesh model of a turbine and we can see that various curves and various edges have different mesh sizes to capture the geometry accurately so once we captured This is a close-up view of the propeller and the debris protector. The debris protector is in orange and the propeller is in pink color. So once we, uh, once our complete, uh, this is, is the uh, um, mesh model of a turbine again. And it can be seen that all the propeller, the debris protector, rod, each and everything has been meshed properly. So after generating the surface mesh of the turbine and, and we were showed that the, the, the stuff, that each and every part of the turbine has been meshed properly. So what we did is we generate a surf volume mesh from this surface mesh. So first we generate the surface mesh of the turbine, then the whole fluid domain, the whole fluid domain was volumetrically meshed. Okay. So basically, we used uh, tetrahedral elements for 3D elements, and in 2D they were all tri elements. Okay, uh, these are the solver settings which we use. We basically use ANSYS fluent to model the flow through this turbine, and we use pressure-based solver and the steady-state solver. With you know, obviously, we model the turbulence effect which occurred during the the flow through the turbine, and then. We actually model the turbine as it is made up of aluminium because we were not uh, taking into account the structural uh, uh, deformations in the turbine. We were actually just uh, focusing on the uh, fluid flow through the turbine. So it doesn't matter whether we uh, assign an aluminium or any other material to this turbine. And we model the viscous and uh, turbulent effects of the fluid. And then we use different solution method and schemes to make sure that the solution is as reliable and as close to the real life as it is and these were different boundary conditions we use we <coughs> so what we did is we modeled three different types of debris protectors and we installed one 
and then determine the flow properties. Then install the other and then determine the flow properties. So different uh, CAD models were made and different WS protectors were used. So finally, what we concluded was, uh, whenever the flow passes through the uh, turbine, the inlet flow velocity was 2.1 meter per second, but because of the diffusers installed in the turbine, when the flow reaches the propeller of the turbine, the flow velocity increases. And in different case, cases, different flow velocities were achieved. So, okay, different flow velocities were achieved. So in case one, case one, which is shown here, in which we install a debris protector with a blunt face, uh, with a wire gauze, and, then, and in case two, we install a debris protector uh, without the wire gauze and in case three we install a debris protector with a sharp pointed tip instead of a blunt tip so we should remember that case one is the debris protector with a blunt tip and a wire gauze case two is without the wire gauze and case three is with a pointed nose so for case one we were able to achieve a maximum velocity on the propeller maximum velocity of the water as the water enters the diffuser section the water velocity increases so uh, the maximum velocity achieved on the propeller section was 4.11 meter in case 2 it was 4.22 meter 4.23 meter in case 3 it was 4.05 meter and in case 4 the case 4 was without any debris protector in case actually we removed the debris protector which is not actually possible but we for, for simulations we actually removed the debris protector so the maximum velocity achieved at the turbine, propeller uh, of the turbine was 4.48 meters per second. And in different cases, different normal and axial forces were acting on the turbine and we actually evaluated these forces. The negative sign in the normal forces shows the direction because uh, it is opposite to the axis we defined in a positive direction for this whole simulation. So we calculated the normal and axial forces which will act on the turbine. So, after evaluating all these values, these are the few of the results. Basically, this graph shows the velocity contours of uh, the turbine. Me, and it shows uh, that Mr. Asim, uh, can may I interrupt a little bit? We are lacking behind a schedule, so I would request sure. you please to uh, swiftly go on with your presentation and maybe give us some recommendations at the end or whatever your final results were. Thank okay, you, thank you. So basically, this picture shows some of the simulation studies and some of the results by which we were able to evaluate the maximum velocity that which we will achieve at the propeller and different. pressure variations for different cases and obviously without any debris protector the velocity the increase in the velocity through the diffusers were maximum and we can conclude that we can generate the maximum electricity as the flow velocity is maximum because the drag is minimum in this particular case so then a nice few of the installation schemes which were actually recommended by the manufacturer and different solution options and we actually concluded that thro throughout the length of the Ghazi Bratha canal catering for the effect of the drag with the turbine causes we can install 20 to 21 turbines and 14 to 16 possible turbines in Upper Jhelum canal and 20 to 21 turbines in Ghazi Bratha canal and uh, this uh, with minimizing the interference of one turbine on another a longitudinal direction and through our simulations we were able to determine that a, max, a minimum distance of 20 meter is required literally between the turbines as the flow recovers its velocity 18 meters 17 to 18 meters after the turbine so if we install a turbine less than a 20 meter distance from a first turbine uh, the performance of the turbine will not be accurate. But if we reduce the distance 
uh, if we increase the distance to 20 meter or more than 20 meter between two successive rows of the turbine, we can achieve the maximum performance from a multiple turbines. So this is basically the section of the Ghazi Bluth Canal passing through the camera where we plan to install the turbine because of security reasons. Okay, thank you. Any questions, please? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad, for your uh, very uh, informative presentation on uh, on more of uh, technical aspect of the turbines. And uh, I'm very sorry, but we could not. Uh, we we are a bit short of our scheduled time, and uh, our next presenter is already online. Uh, so I would uh, quickly uh, go on with the brief uh, uh, of what Asim Shahzad already said during his presentation. He mentioned something about the challenges and the risk related to this uh, technology. Uh, he mentioned about the CAD modeling where he has produced a meshing model of the turbine along with its uh, other uh, parts. Then he mentioned something about the pressure and the velocity profiles of uh, turbine blades. Uh, then he mentioned about the debris protector. He has already uh, modeled his in, its, in its software. Then he mentioned something about the turbine park with overhead cables and uh, gave uh, something of a 20 meter of minimum distance between the turbine rows uh, for uh, reducing the wake effects of one turbine to the other. So I thank you very much, Mr. Asim Shahzad, for your nice presentation. We have some questions definitely for you from the participant, but uh, due to some shortage of time, we are going to go to the next presenter and uh, we would see it out if we have some time after the presentation to address your questions too. Otherwise, what we would do is we would uh, shift the question answers to today's end of the knowledge sharing session where we would address the remaining questions. And if possible, we would, we would ask your uh, support in uh, replying to those questions on the live session or maybe later on through email to you and we will relevant, uh, relevant professionals or experts would be sent the questions. So thank you very much, Asim Shadar again. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dwarsa. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was Mr. Asim Shahzad on the uh, side of the simulation studies for the installation of multiple turbines. A very well-informed presentation. Unfortunately, uh, due to some technical issues, we didn't have enough time to uh, carry on with his full presentation. But uh, definitely, his presentation would be available at our website. If anyone is interested, he can uh, go and watch the presentation uh, later on. And if he's interested in anything specifically, we can address those questions directly to uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad later. So thank you very much again. And let's go on with our main schedule. We have our next presenter available with us. Uh, the topic of the presentation is design concepts of hydrokinetic turbines and performance in variable flows. Uh, and I would uh, really appreciate and uh, at front, I would, I'm very grateful to uh, Mr. Tommaso Morbiato for agreeing to participate in our uh, this SAAD webinar. Uh, I'm really grateful that he showed this enthusiasm and uh, 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 agreed to support Sark Energy Center in its uh, webinar and Mr. Tommaso is a very busy man so I would quickly introduce him and then give the mic to him. Mr. Tommaso Morbiato is a founder, CEO and R&D head of Wind City company. He has a master's in civil engineering with a thesis on aeroelasticity of structures in 2002. He did his PhD in structural mechanics in 2008. He is active as a head engineer. R&D lead and scientific coordinator of wind energy projects. He has also served as adjunct professor in industrial design and architecture faculties. And he chairs a European cooperation in science and technology action group. Thanks to his new energy conversion concept uh, in variable flows, he was recently awarded the national international prizes, which is a startup Europe award from the European Commission, Edison Pulse from Energy de France Group, uh, Progetto Marzato Unique Credit Start Lab ABB Ability. So uh, I'm uh, very grateful again to Mr. Tommaso Morbiato, Morbiato for his uh, um, agreeing to participate as a presenter. So I'm over to uh, giving over to Mr. Morbiato for his presentation. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, you are online now. Please go ahead with your uh, presentation, sir. So thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Asan. Uh, Javed for uh, giving me the opportunity to participate to this uh, webinar. So we will uh, start uh, ahead now with the presentation. Um, 
the topic uh, as introduced, uh, please. Uh, may, yes. may I interrupt, uh, Mr. Morbiato? Your uh, slides are not visible to us. So could you share the screen, uh, your uh, presentation slides, please? Uh, yes. Your voice is very audible, very clear. Everything is okay. You, yes. Perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. Okay. Perfect, sir. Go ahead, sir. So let's go on with our topic uh, today uh, for the presentation, design concepts of hydrokinetic uh, turbines with an emphasis on performance in variable flows. Um, as Mr. Hassan said, um, I will speak uh, from the side of uh, the company which I, I am R&D head and CEO, which is Wind City, uh, where our concept uh, was resulted a winner in European uh, Startup Award and has the seal of excellence from the European Commission, uh, right uh, in the concept of uh, transferring that technology from our a small wind turbine system to uh, a possible technology transfer into a water uh, turbine system, an hydrokinetic one. Uh, so let's just uh, briefly uh, analyze uh, the conventional and non-conventional design in hydropower. So hydropower, conventional, conventionally speaking, um, every one of us know that uh, we uh, begin from uh, um, natural reserves with uh, um, potential energy and uh, we need some infrastructure in conventional hydropower to uh, achieve uh, pressure, uh, uh, energy and uh, kinetic energy and then uh, we go into the uh, standard um, converter efficiency with more infrastructure. I put this sign here, uh, just a funny sign of a, a house, meaning we need an infrastructure to do that. Uh, while in more recently, in on the right side of the of the slide, with non-conventional uh, hydropower, uh, uh, again starting either from uh, uh, hydro from uh, uh, kinetic energy uh, in natural reserves with some uh, potential energy in case of uh, uh, wave converters, uh, the, the practical, uh, so the engineering world, um, find uh, three cases uh, ahead. So uh, encased water flow, uh, different power takeoffs, and uh, open flow choice. So which one of these three, um, uh, which one of these three um, lines to, to approach is uh, all about uh, non-conventional uh, hydropower. In case of enclosed flow, enclosed flow uh, we uh, have to face still infrastructures and uh, the wave energy conversion projects and uh, uh, we will, we had historically low efficiency designs and now more advanced dev devices with Kaplan turbines inside or also a French concept converting hydro uh, power to air uh, pressure. Uh, then in the middle column of non-conventional side, we have uh, a, a complete variety of uh, power takeoffs from uh, point absorbers, uh, energy attenuator from waves, oscillating surge or oscillating column, water column. Always here we have to face with waves, so we are uh, in uh, uh, open, uh, uh, let's see, in sea, uh, ocean rather than canals, but here technology does not require um, infrastructure anymore. And uh, the third option, is uh, the option open flow. Every one of us know that in this case, uh, we have a first uh, uh, limitation uh, from the batch limit. So we only have an amount of energy of 0 0.6 that we have convert that we can convert. And in this case, we're talking about hydrokinetic. And uh, what is important that uh, in this uh, case, we can apply wind tech uh, transfer, so uh, having the same efficiencies of the wind 
energy converters, so reaching about an 80% of the batch limit uh, as a maximum uh, efficiency. So just going briefly into, into the concept, we, 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 uh, we see the encased flow uh, uh, concept. This is that you can see here is a Singapore uh, concept for a advanced wave energy converter. You can see there is a, a Kaplan turbine inside of the concept. So this is an advanced wave energy converter uh, um, concept. Uh, this is just uh, you, what you can find from the uh, Haas uh, concept. This is a French concept and is about uh, co encasing the water flow and uh, converting it, uh, its energy into an uh, air pressure uh, um, circuit. So extracting energy basically from a pneumatic concept, uh, from a conversion uh, from uh, a wave energy concept. And... Uh, here you can see uh, just summarized the, the uh, two mo most important uh, uh, power uh, power takeoffs uh, uh, in wave uh, concepts. Uh, on the left side, you can see a more uh, standard one, which have to do has to do with a, a linear uh, linear generator, a linear electrical generator. Uh, with a point oscillator uh, concept. And on the right side, instead, you can see uh, a Swedish uh, concept, uh, a very uh, recent concept with a very complex uh, uh, pneu mechanical drivetrain. And uh, so you can see how much uh, these concepts uh, have to do with uh, complex uh, mechanics that uh, many, many times uh, has to do uh, with difficult operations and uh, increasing uh, ca uh, capex uh, to achieve the the, the effective the, the, the effective uh, uh, power conversion uh, in the third case uh, we have the open flow concepts which is uh, right uh, where our presentation will go deeply uh, uh, ahead from now and um, Mainly, you have uh, the two concepts of axial rotor on the left side and cross-axis cross rotor on the right side. Um, uh, of course, uh, um, uh, when, we, when we have to do with uh, uh, hydrokinetic energy, uh, uh, the more uh, we go uh, deep uh, from the surface, the more uh, chance we have to uh, have um, um, a higher water speed, especially in case of uh, seabed and uh, coastal areas. Uh, but uh, what this slide wants to summarize uh, from the point of view of uh, design concepts is that um, also from this triangle that you see on the left here, um, uh, water pressures, of course, of course, linearly increase uh, with water depth, and so what, for instance, the the most important Scottish um, project uh, uh, is facing up to now, um, an open flow uh, axial rotor concept in Scotland. I was saying uh, that now they are designing at about thirty meters from the surface. Just imagine that uh, you have to face, uh, so with uh, 10 kilonewtons uh, per cubic meter uh, times 10 or 30, sorry, times 30 meter of depth, uh, you have to face with a 300 kilonewton per square meter pressure on the blades, just about uh, considering the hydrostatic pressure. Uh, so this, of course, uh, increases the overall uh, self-weight of the structures and increase the overall inertia of the system. And what comes out uh, is that if you increase the inertia of the system, then you need, uh, as uh, the, the cyclic uh, scheme I, I, I show here in the, in the left, the more you increase the inertia of the system, the more you need a higher uh, cut-in speed from the water to achieve your energy conversion rate, and um, so uh, this is a this is a uh, like a, a cyclic process that uh, 
uh, allows you with or even more inertia of the system because now you're going even more uh, in depth and uh, in this in this um, cycle is not really uh, um, is not really um, given that you will achieve an optimal design so this is why um, always uh, in either kinetic design um, it's better to uh, understand that the, the, the optimal point of design would be rather a trade-off between a, a smaller um, a smaller turbine, a buoyant perhaps concept, and uh, a lighter design, a small inertia design, perhaps in modules, uh, more modules that will allow you to um, uh, keep uh, the overall um, design um, in a in an optimal cost, in an optimal material consumption uh, uh, range, and uh, so. Uh, talking about um, buoyant concepts, uh, buoyant concepts, uh, uh, hydrokinetic turbines. These are uh, the most uh, conventional uh, design that uh, we, uh, we that we found uh, for canals or also for um, coastal areas in oceans and seas. You can see here uh, in the upper part two axial rotor concepts and. Uh, in the lower part, you can see um, a cross-axis rotor, which is, uh, um, even though is, um, its rotating axis is a horizontal one, still this is a cross-axis rotor because it becomes um, uh, it becomes clear that the generator, uh, the permanent magnet generator, lies on uh, the central line and uh, that uh, the blades rotate in a sense uh, that is uh, cross-axis uh, um, oriented uh, with the water flow. So, uh, uh, where our design and our challenge uh, now in the tech transfer uh, from our wind, uh, from our wind uh, turbine concept is, is that we all realized that uh, when we go to the most standard business case where we went through, for instance, with port authorities in Italy or in Croatia or in France, and uh, we are all speaking of um, possible application in uh, variable water flows. Variable water flows, we realize that they're pretty much uh, all around our cities uh, because they can be found in navigation induced surface flows or in uh, river mouth flows or in tidal periodic flows or also in seaside landside breezes that uh, uh, also induce surface flows in the water in a, with a circadian rhythm and uh, pretty much uh, from what we can see in the water flow measurements for instance in port of venice uh, these four uh, these four water flows are pretty much uh, mixed up together. Uh, so uh, the problem uh, with uh, is with space variable flows. And uh, uh, first uh, understanding in design is that is that uh, due to its uh, high power coefficient and due to the fact that it's omnidirectional in behavior. Uh, the Darius wind turbine concept has been adapted for water in most cases. Uh, still, conventional fixed pitch Darius turbines suffer from two drawbacks, low starting torque and shaking due to cyclical vibration, cyclical variation in blade angle of attack. And these points can be overcame, uh, for instance, uh, by using helical blades instead of instead of uh, straight blades, but still we have a not large, not large starting torque. So, uh, and uh, also considering that flows are not only uh, space varying, but also time varying. For instance, you can see here in the upper figure that in one hour you have oscillation also uh, from one to 2.5 meters per second, or also you have uh, 
variable flows induced by uh, by by ship and uh, in all these cases you have time uh, time varying flow so you can understand that uh, um, standard uh, machines so standard design they are designed for a regular flow that allows uh, startup production for a half an hour for instance and then perhaps another uh, another half an hour of production with only uh, two um, or let's say just 10, 12 per day um, uh, startup and, uh, and shut off uh, uh, cycles. But in variable flows, every five minutes you have, or every 10 minutes you have one cycle. So can you imagine all the starting time and shutting down time? So very much very, very much of the time is spent in transient be in transient mode and production with standard designs is very 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 low and uh, this is uh, due to the fact that uh, as you can see from this picture um, the if you consider the the, the 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 pitch of the blades in standard position for the the rails so for the cross axis turbines uh, you, and you have a power coefficient which is high only at, at higher tip, tip speed ratio. So it's high only uh, when the turbine is started, but in, in the startup region, uh, so with the red uh, bold curve, you have negative or zero power coefficient and you need a variable pitch, for instance, of 30 degrees on the blade axis to achieve in the in the red dotted curve to achieve a sufficient torque to start the turbine but in this case you can start the turbine and then you have a completely uh, not not satisfactory behavior and at standard at standard velocities so you achieve cell starting and then you cannot produce with a high power coefficient at high tip, at optimal tip speed ratio. So, what you can do, uh, there are still there are some variable pitch concepts like in uh, in this case uh, where you can achieve, as you can see, uh, a better performing uh, startup region with higher power coefficients, and uh, to achieve this, you need. Uh, complex uh, radial arms, you need, you need control arms, you need, to, you need to implement, which is not really something, um, uh, something standard or something, uh, uh, or something uh, that is commercially uh, ready, that is market ready. You need, to, you need to have a variable pitch concept on the blades. Uh, also very important is the fact that uh, there is a moment of inertia dependence in pulsating flows. So as you can see in the left, this is something that is a, is a Japanese research. Uh, if you consider a sufficiently um, pulsating flow, for instance, in 30, to, uh, one, 30 seconds to one, mi to one minute, uh, you have uh, the fact that you have an increase in efficiency if you have a lower inertia. So can you imagine? Well, as we are, and as we are doing in our patent concept, uh, if you now you not only consider an inertia range, but you consider if that you can have a variable inertia in your turbine. So you can see that with the oscillation of water speed, if you have a small turbine, you have a rapid turbine. If you have a big turbine, you have a slow behavior turbine. So if you, if you can combine the, the two of them, uh, you can achieve uh, at the, the same free run speed for any oscillation of the water speed. And so this is our concept for uh, uh, wind, for small wind that we're trying now to, uh, to adapt to uh, water flows. And we have achieved for the first time uh, with our patent uh, uh, the first passive fully integrated pitch and inertia variable geometry turbine. So we do not have a family of uh, turbines for a family of 
power curves, we have only one turbine that can have all the power curves inside one turbine. So we can envelop all the power curves to achieve in any variable water flow, always the best uh, torque, so the best power curve. Uh, so this is just uh, a, a, an impression from our website of the, the concept where we are working on. We're working on a floating and balancing buoy, electrical generator uh, in the not submerged part, mechanical, mechanical shaft going down water, and uh, the our turbine, which we are just transferring from wind, is 2 kilo, kilowatts, and in water is 25 kilowatts, 4.5 square meter concept with variable geometry radial arm. Of course, uh, is, uh, it has all the good advantage that you mentioned in your webinar uh, for the um, hydrokinetic turbines. So it's low speed, it's reversible, compliant with real flow and reliable in tidal and current, and it self starts of also in water. Uh, so just to summarize about the design uh, in hydrokinetic turbines, we always need to consider that uh, uh, efficiency and efficacy are can can be at two complete different sides of an axis, uh, and it, it they have to do, of course, with infrastructure and high capex from one side, and no infrastructure and reversible concept in the other side. So we are trying, of course, to go, not only us, but everyone in hydrokinetic design need to go in the, uh, uh, in the upper right region of the Cartesian diagram. And we really need to not go in the uh, left side and the down side having constraint from wave or regular flows or active controls. So just to uh, give you a last, uh, uh, a last uh, impression about concerns, of course, we need to understand that marine concerns with biofouling is one of the uh, greatest challenge that we need to face. Just remember that biofouling is responsible for fuel consumption increase up to 40 five to 50% to maintain crew speed in any type of ship. And so the same is for our hydrokinetic turbines. And about canals, uh, at least in Europe, we need to have very much in mind that river management after hydrokinetic turbine positioning need to consider energy balance of the system a design speed decrease in the canal, so tangential stress perturbation at shores and ultimately embankment uh, dura durability. And this is our team. I am Tommaso Morbiato, and uh, this is just the relations that we are trying to build uh, to uh, develop our uh, turbine concept. And this is us with our uh, contacts that uh, we are, you are very uh, welcome to, to, to use to, to get in touch and uh, try to cooperate for this uh, challenge. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tommaso Morbiato, for a very well-informed and detailed presentation on the design performance of uh, this uh, variable flow turbine. So I would briefly uh, uh, just overview the, what uh, Mr. Morbiato said in his presentation. He mentioned in the start about the axial rotors and the pressure difference uh, in rotor due to the depth of water. Then he mentioned something about the variable flows due to tides, river mouths, landside breeze, and seaside induced effects. Uh, then he mentioned some drawbacks of the conventional fixed Darius turbines. Uh, he also mentioned something about the time variable flows, which is between 1 to 2.5 meters per second. He mentioned something about the various cycles of speed in variable flows compared to the regular flows. Uh, he mentioned about the pitch degrees for varying speed of the turbines, high pitch degrees for lower speed of flows, and uh, uh, on the opposite, if there's a low pitch degree, then you have uh, it is for the high speed of flows. Then he mentioned something about the inertia dependence in pulsating flows the integrated pitch and inertia variable geometry turbine concept developed by him. And lastly, he gave a graph on which he mentioned that uh, the design turbine should have a higher efficiency with a lower, no, uh, with a rather no infrastructure 
uh, for installation which would uh, serve the purpose so mr mohan yadav thank you very much for your presentation uh, presentation uh, we would quickly jump to our question answer session we have one or two questions uh, we are lagging behind the, on the schedule so we would like you to uh, reply to those questions we have a question from uh, dr shweb ahmed he has asked a question that uh, can your research on blade design can be useful on small scale and low cost submersible turbines please um yes thank you for the for the question yes uh the answer is yes all our um r and uh, research is um going in in the sense of uh keeping down costs so our submerged uh to bind uh um, as the as the challenge and the objective to uh keep uh Uh, levelized cost of electricity as low as possible and uh, uh, currently we are um, we are uh, designing it to be uh, in the average um, in the average uh, uh, lcoe uh, of the uh, fuel uh, mix and uh, of uh, conventional uh, uh, wind energy uh, so Uh, of course uh, what we what we are doing is uh, we're trying to um, um, to um, keep down uh, the, the, the 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 production cost which is uh, very much easy for us coming from the small wind sector because uh, we already uh, are trying to commercialize We're really commercializing um, small wind turbines at uh, at a cost that is, on average, uh, with the uh, small wind sector, which is high, uh, slightly mm -hmm. higher uh, than the standard wind energy. But uh, as we have a 10 or 8 time uh, scale factor, due to the fact that, of course, water speed and uh, uh, sorry, uh, water density is giving much more energy than uh, air density so uh, we're pretty much uh, staying in the in the um, in the standard selling cost uh, for, for for instance uh, uh, photovoltaic projects or uh, big wind energy projects thank you thank you very much uh, morbi atu Uh, we have a inter, um, we have a connecting question uh, related uh, to this uh, reply one of the participants has asked that uh, what about the complexity of the mechanical design for your turbine it looks very complex uh, so could you just briefly touch on that aspect oh yes uh, uh, no. our, uh, webinar we are talking about very uh, simplistic uh, type of a technology which can be implemented very easily indigenously by yes. local uh, uh, south asian countries so in yes. perspective of your what do you see about it yes so uh, i was mentioning this concept here uh, saying that the variable pitch uh, concept can be uh, very uh, complex this is an uh, australian concept that you see here and this effectively is uh, is is complex uh, conversely um, in our case uh, what that is this case um, all the variation is kept inside the radial arm so and is passive there is no active control so uh, this is a very easy concept and this is why we uh, are able to um, to stay with the costs uh, in the average uh, renewable energy cost of any any uh, renewable source so with no extra costs is just um, a natural uh, balance of equilibrium of dynamical equilibrium between uh, uh, centrifugal force and fluid dynamic forces and fluid dynamic pitching moment okay so there is completely no electronics uh, uh, underwater and is all self balancing and uh, any mechanics which is just uh, uh, about uh, spring group okay is about is just inside a uh, watertight uh, radial arm so really is just a uh, very easy concept and we are um, we are very 
um, keen to proceed in this um, uh, in this uh, uh, TRL uh, because uh, we can see that we will be able to deliver for the first time uh, an easy technology technological concept so reliable technological concept uh, to the world of uh, the uh, variable water flows thank you uh, thank you mr morbiatu we have a last question from one of the participants uh, the question is related uh, is your uh, turbine rotors good for uh, unidirectional running water if so what is the generally speed range of that Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we are talking in the perspective of canals. For example, in Pakistan, we have a canal with wind speed, uh, with water speeds of one, one point two meter per second. So, how do you see that? Yes. Yes. We are. We are. We are. Um, we are finalizing our design uh, in order to have um, startup behavior um, above zero point seven meter per second, zero point sixty five meter per second. And so this is uh, fitting. And uh, about um, the um, about the use in unidirectional canals, uh, this is also uh, one important thing to consider. This is an omnidirectional uh, turbine concept, which means that uh, can uh, be implemented in any uh, direction water flows and. Uh, this imply that it also can um, be used in unidirectional uh, water flows. So uh, the, uh, the 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 wide uh, the the, the number of applications of this uh, turbine concept is is very wide, and uh, um, our buoying. Uh, floating and balancing buoy concept is um, ensuring that uh, the turbine stands always in vertical position and uh, we are also developing a mooring concept with just a uh, mooring concept of a, a, a three ties a fixed point that will allow uh, it to be fixed at the shores of any uh, any canal of course also in in modules the more modules will be on the canal uh, the more easy uh, uh, would be to achieve uh, the standard mooring uh, concept we so uh, uh, definitely uh, this can be done also because our first demonstrator that uh, we are uh, um, planning and on organizing uh, in the first quarter 2018 will be uh, uh, in a uh, Lake Garda in Italy, northern uh, Italy, Lake Garda, uh, at uh, uh, the um, the mouth of uh, um, uh, um, of a hydro hydropower electricity uh, uh, canal uh, going uh, into the into the lake. So uh, to to answer just to answer your um, your question, uh, our first uh, demonstrator uh, will be right in a canal position. So uh, it definitely is possible to use in canals. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Morbiato, for a very detailed reply. And uh, uh, I must admit that uh, we are quite impressed with the level of presentation which you have just delivered. It was uh, wonderful to listen to you. We all benefit a lot from your uh, presentation. And we would have uh, liked to ask you more questions, but due to shortage of time, we have to uh, close the session now for a short break. Sure. So if you are willing, you can attend our, uh, after the break, we can have a uh, session on the knowledge sharing uh, where we have a lot more questions from the participants. So if you if you are able to participate, I'm you, I know that you are a very busy man, so if possible, you can attend that session. So thank you very much again for uh, agreeing to participate in our webinar. If if I cannot be there, then please uh, write me emails and let's keep in touch. I, it was very uh, a pleasure for me to uh, to to participate in this uh, webinar. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much, sir. We would definitely uh, send to you the questions if asked by the participant. And moreover, we would like to collaborate with your organization more in the future for very our good. future projects, our programs, and for, for me thank as you, well. Sir. For me as well. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
so ladies and gentlemen uh, this is the end of uh, our session before the break we are quite uh, late as per our schedule so uh, instead of 11:30 we, we would like to get back at 11:35 uh, maybe 5 minutes delay and we have uh, two more presentations along with a knowledge sharing session and a concluding session uh, of this webinar uh, uh, you are most welcome to write any question at any time of the uh, webinar thank you very much and uh, see you later at 11:35 
good morning everybody and uh, welcome back to uh, sark energy center's uh, webinar on use of uh, submersible uh, hydrokinetic submersible turbines uh, we uh, before the break uh, before the break we had uh, excellent presentations from uh, uh, dr nawaz akhtar on the planning of installation of a hydrokinetic submersible turbine we also had a short interview of mr trey taylor verdant usa on the commercial aspects of hydrokinetic turbines uh, then we uh, we had mr asim shahzad uh, from uh, institute of space technology on the simulation studies for the installation of multiple turbines and at the last we had uh, an expert from outside the region uh, from uh, italy mr tomaso morbiato who uh, gave an excellent presentation on the design concepts and the performance of his uh, uh, patented uh, variable flow uh, turbine uh, being developed by him so now we move on to our uh, next session we have uh, two session two uh, basic presentation in this session so the first presentation is from uh, mr malik nadim awan who was uh, basically an uh, entrepreneur uh, working for a uh, development of this technology in pakistan and he would give a perspective a business perspective of hydrokinetic submersible turbines in pakistan we thought that apart from the technical and the policy side uh, we should have uh, some perspective from the business community and uh, he he being an excellent entrepreneur for a uh, uh, promotion of this technology so i would quickly introduce mr malik nadim awan to you uh, mr malik nadim awan is a uh, Uh, basically went to germany in 1991 and went to a vocational school and got diploma austin handels in uh, 1994 uh, then he started an avan yandlux pakistan private limited company in 2006 for solar systems in pakistan with cooperation and partnership of uh, yandlux gmbh hamburg he and his partner mr dor met with mr uh, with uh, dr comsi which uh, gave an earlier presentation yesterday in hamburg in end of uh, 2010 and they agreed to purchase the first turbine for pakistan uh, so he presented his uh, business model to uh, chief minister of the punjab province of uh, pakistan uh, this uh, presented his business model to him uh, back in uh, berlin in 2011 with his efforts he uh, signed an agreement with pakistan air force to install this turbine in ghazi barota canal uh, in pakistan and with the collective uh, efforts of uh, government officials and pakistan air force and the efforts of uh, institute of space technology islamabad uh, specifically mr asim shahzad and uh, uh, with the support of mr uh, mr nawaz akhtar from sark energy center they started a pilot project at the upper jhelum canal installed that turbine in the uh, jhelum canal and they uh, evaluated the results out of that canal and based on which we are conducting this webinar study so mr malik nadim uh, we are very grateful to you for agreeing to participate in our uh, webinar and we would uh, really request you to give uh, the business perspective of hydrokinetic submersible turbines and uh, the, uh, for that i hand over the mic to uh, mr nadim awan now Uh, so, Mr. Nadim uh, Awan Sahib, am I audible to you? Okay. Uh, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, wa alaikum assalam, Nadim Sahib. Your presentation is very visible, very quite clear. You can just uh, turn it to full mod page, maybe, uh, and then uh, your audio is also very clear. Okay. Thank you. I love. You. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I am uh, very thankful for uh, Sark Energy Center that they have provided me opportunity uh, to present my uh, business concept and uh, my personal views regarding to uh, uh, run of the river submerged uh, 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 mines uh, in Pakistan. So. Uh, as uh, i have uh, uh, present my short uh, introduction as uh, we uh, started uh, small hydro power uh, in pakistan uh, 2011 uh, with uh, pakistan air force and then we have uh, started studied pakistan uh, canals and rivers so we uh, come from uh, energy situation and alternative sources 
and we think that small hydro turbine is the best option for Pakistan uh, in that time. And Pakistan Air Force suggested us to install a smart hydro turbine in Ghazi Barotha Canal. In that background, we started in Pakistan uh, this concept. And current, but later on, we have uh, studied that we need a proper uh, study on water resources, uh, energy prices, uh, the problems of river uh, environmental uh, issues, and uh, similarly, the approvals of governments. So we start uh, with these uh, points uh, with uh, a proper uh, study. So we come to next with uh, Institute of Space Technologies, and we join them for uh, these studies. And finally, we submitted uh, the data from Pakistan energy situation. Uh, require a total requirement, production capacity, average uh, production, household, industrial, agriculture, commercial, governmental, and street lights, and so on. This data is now available. Uh, now the need of explore alternate energy sources is because energy crisis is one of the major issue of developing nations like Pakistan. The growing population and the industries of our country require electricity more than ever before. Due to financial limitations, the power production utilizing liquid or gaseous fuel is becoming a heavy burden onto the budget. Therefore, alternative energy sources need to be harvested for the nationals good. So, measures to meet shortfall, energy conversation, energy management, production capacity enhancement, thermal <clears throat> environment issues, increasing prices and security of fuel, neutral, and then hydro. Alternative energy sources, prefer is renewable energy sources available naturally, <coughs> solar, wind, hydro. Hydro energy acquisition options, potential energy, kinetic energy, and we come to present small hydro turbine in form of kinetic energy. So I present my turbine in physically, it weighted just 300 kilo, its height is only three and a half meter and it can hang, install very easily on Pakistani rivers. Then <clears throat> working principle is it is just need a velocity of water and uh, then depth of water. There are two main uh, points to install this turbine. We have uh, proposed in Pakistan is the one of the best country in the world uh, for canal uh, channelization and uh, length of canals ever in the world. So we have proposed a turbine park in which 12 hydro turbines has been installed in serial at a distance of eight meter to each other after the creation of an overhead structure. The canal service width is 94 meters, but owning to jeanette in the side walls and to install the turbine 1.8 meter depth into the water. The canal width is intentionally been chosen to be 85 meter. So proposed turbine park, each turbine uh, is around about 2.5 meter and the next park will be 50 meter uh, with the distance. Then so one unit produce one uh, five kilowatt one park probably 10 to 12 
turbines produce 50 to 60 kilowatt one park serial and parallel 20 to 24 turbines 100 to 120 <coughs> kilowatt and multiple parks 100 to 120 turbines 500 to 600 kilowatt so uh, this is a satellite view of uh, Ghazi Brotha Canal and especially uh, um, Pakistan uh, Air Base uh, camera uh, view. Uh, it will be 5.5 uh, kilometer and total turbines. Uh, I think uh, we have lost uh, connection with Mr. Nadeem Awan Saib. So, if uh, are you listening to me, Mr. Nadeem Saab? Can you write me some text message? Is it some kind of an audio problem or internet connection problem? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, uh, check out if uh, Mr. Nadeem Awaz is going to uh, Nadeem Awan is going to reconnect with us uh, very shortly. I think. In the meanwhile, we will uh, try to uh, make this uh, session more interactive by asking one of the questions being asked by the participant. In the meanwhile, uh, with me, I have with me Dr. Shweb Ahmed, and uh, we have a question that uh, from the participant that what will be the use of uh, this uh, modeling techniques uh, which were earlier mentioned by Mr. Asim Shahzad for advancement of this technology those uh, I think the participant would like to know that with this 3D analysis on CAD and these things and with with us being uh, saying that the technology is very simplicity in its installation so what's your opinion on this one Dr. Sal? Well thank you Asim. Uh, uh, yes I agree that technology is very simple and we would like to keep its applications very simple. But at the same time, the work done by Mr. Shahzad is extremely important for the advancement of this technology itself. Uh, I have just viewed his presentation, the part of this presentation. He is carrying out a modeling on it. So I suppose um, this modeling can be very, very helpful for improvement, bringing improvement in the existing designs or designing the new types of uh, the turbines. Especially as he was mentioning that uh, just by improving the cone of the debris protector, he was able to increase the water which was stretching the turbine blades. Likewise, same modeling can be helpful for in, uh, for uh, improving the design of the diffuser. Similarly, same similar modeling can be helpful in improving the designs or improving the efficiency of the blades. Similarly, these type of modelings can also be useful for uh, determining the wake effects, the effects of the turbulence on the blades and the efficiency of the turbines uh, and determining the distance i mean side by side distance between two turbines what is the optimum distance uh, similarly uh, determining the distance between the optimum distressing uh, distance between the cascade configuration as well so i appreciate the work which they have done and this is going to be very very useful in my point of view thank you thank you very much uh, dr shweb saab for your uh, very detailed uh, uh, reply to the specific question uh, we are really blessed to have him with us uh, in this uh, south energy center uh, with his experience he uh, contributes a lot uh, during the research uh, projects and uh, uh, specific studies so over to nadeem saab if he is still uh, with us online nadeem saab can you hear us 
I think there is some issue with uh, Nadeem Alon Sahib's microphone. Uh, Nadeem Sahib, we are uh, online asking uh, questions. Of, uh, so if you can, in the middle, in the meanwhile, just try to reconnect uh, with us. Uh, your microphone seems to be not working, but your presentation, we can see uh, it is working. So you you please uh, carry on your this troubleshooting with the microphone. So in the meanwhile, I will uh, um, shoot out another question to Dr. Shweb Saab. Uh, so Dr. Saab, we have, we have talked a lot about the design and the application of this technology. Uh, but just out of curiosity, I have this, um, this question came to my mind that what do you think would be the operation and maintenance of these turbines like these specific experts are telling us about installation of uh, 1000 and 2000 units of these small turbines in the canals so uh, how do you see uh, we would pursue with the uh, in future the operation maintenance of a single turbine or a row of turbine would we have to uh, stop the river flow of the river to repair them or something like that just a naive kind of question over to you sir all right thank you asian uh, that's a very practical question and uh, of course, whatever reply I have, that's based on my experience. And let me admit that my experience on the real application of these turbines is very less. Okay. But however, what I could foresee that types of maintenance requirements is, um, I think the majority of the uh, maintenance would be the scheduled maintenance. Uh, I say so because um, realizing the nature and the simplicity and the ruggedness of the technology and the matured matureness of the technologies in present time, I think there would be very less breakdowns. And in these, the breakdowns majority would be majority the ma maintenance requirement for unscheduled maintenance would be on the electrical side rather than the turbine itself. However, the scheduled maintenance of the turbines um, should be, uh, it should be one of the requirements, though it should be very less compared to, let's say, windmills or others, but there, there is a requirement. The foremost requirement would be the removal of the debris on those things which uh, during the operation gets clinked onto the blades or the body of the turbines. So that, that should be one of the very, very, uh, uh, I think most, most maintenance resources would be going to that direction should be, uh, that I mean, that should be taken care of because knowing that in the SARC, the, the canals and the rivers, they, they are not as clean as uh, one should think about them. So that would be one of the requirements. Other scheduled maintenance, the whatever the manufacturer tells you, especially from seals point of view, they should not leak. And from the external uh, effects of the corrosion or the water uh, or the sediments uh, on outside of the turbine and its body, uh, probably maybe in years, after three, four, five years, you, there is a need to repaint or re place new layer of protective uh, paintings or materials, whatever. Uh, that, that type of, I could foresee these types of problems. But generally, they will remain low. They will remain low. Uh, in the, again, why once again, I would summarize that electrical side is more prone to for the maintenance. And turbine and uh, whatever is inside water should, in my experience, based on my experience, should be less prone to the unscheduled maintenance. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saab. I think um, uh, you very rightly summarized the whole uh, issue surrounding the operation maintenance of this specific technology. And uh, this is uh, to us, uh, we are still in the learning phase. And uh, to us, this is a very novel and the new technology. And uh, to my understanding, the operation maintenance for this technology uh, would not be on the same scale as to the other dam projects or the run of, run of river projects. So thank you very much again for your uh, very detailed reply. We are trying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to uh, reconnect with uh, Mr. Nadeem Awan uh, for his um, uh, leftover presentation. Uh, in the meanwhile, since he is uh, having trouble in connecting with, um, uh, with, uh, with us, so I would like to move on to our next uh, session. We have with us uh, uh, 
Dr. Irfan Yusuf uh, uh, for his presentation. Uh, if we can, we can see it out. If uh, if we find that Nadim, Mr. Nadim Awan is able to reconnect with us later, uh, we will uh, allow him some time after Mr. Irfan Yusuf's uh, presentation. So um, let let's try a last time, Mr. Nadim Awan. Can you listen to my voice, sir? Well, I don't think so. There's some uh, issue at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you need to ask any questions, if you need to uh, reply to any uh, anything, you can uh, write it write it back to us. Moreover, I should emphasize the need for uh, the need for your comments, specifically your recommendations, uh, which would serve huge purpose uh, for the development of this technology in future. You can write us right now your recommendation or later you can write us uh, via email any recommendation, any con uh, any specific. Um, uh, uh, guidelines or ideas you think uh, which would serve uh, the purpose of um, uh, increased deployment of this technology in South Asia uh, member states in future. So let me uh, go on to Mr. Irfan Yusuf. Mr. Irfan Yusuf is basically a, a director of uh, policy and uh, CDM uh, NAMAS environment side in uh, Alternative Energy Development Board Pakistan. Alternative Energy Development Board Pakistan is basically the federal agency responsible for uh, promotion, development and uh, indigenous development of uh, renewable energy products and projects in the uh, country. So this organization uh, has been working from 2005 up till now and Mr. Afan Yusuf has been working there for last, uh, uh, I think, no, maybe more than 14-15 uh, years. And Mr. Afan Yusuf has held several positions in the organization. Organization. He has worked on several projects ranging from uh, solar PV off-grid, uh, solar on-grid projects. He has also worked a lot on uh, wind energy projects. Then he was responsible for uh, working on the international cooperation uh, with uh, donor agencies and uh, uh, project developers. Uh, he, he has also done his master's in uh, uh, renewable energy from the University of Engineering in Texla. Uh, then later recently he has finished his PhD from the same university back in uh, 2015. If, uh, uh, 15. So uh, Mr. Afan Yusuf uh, has had a huge amount of ex extensive experience on the policy side and the uh, regulatory frameworks developed in uh, in the in, in Pakistan for the last 14, 15 years. I, I think he would uh, uh, he would contribute a lot in his presentation on uh, what kind of uh, policy measures need to be taken uh, for increased deployment of this technology and uh, plus uh, maybe some kind of uh, incentives or anything like that. So let's, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, get, get on with Mr. Erfan Yusuf. Uh, he is uh, available with us online. So I will uh, hand over to Mr. Erfan Yusuf now. So Dr. Erfan uh, uh, Yusuf, sir, are you uh, listening to my voice? Am I audible to you? Yeah, very much audible to me. Thanks, sir. Assalamu uh, to all. Uh, really grateful for providing the opportunity to uh, present and discuss. Uh, Dr. Saab, uh, can I pause you uh, for a, a short minute? Uh, you, you need to, uh, I mean, uh, check out that there is a lot of echo uh, coming from your microphone. And secondly, uh, you need to uh, increase the, uh, I mean, the, the, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the overall presentation view is very small, so you need to make it on the full page uh, view. Is it okay now? Yes, it is okay now. The voice is very shrill. The voice is uh, very shrill. Can you just uh, hold the mic a little bit further uh, so that the, your voice is a bit clear because it's very uh, shrill. Can you speak now? Yeah, no. Is it okay? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect, sir. Perfect. So I think uh, the mic is yours. Please go ahead with it. Thank you. Uh, really thankful to Sark Energy Center for providing me opportunity to present uh, during this webinar. Um, submersible turbines uh, is uh, really a new concept uh, now nowadays, and uh, uh, so far developments have been made in uh, technology developments and. Uh, different uh, prospects of uh, utilizing the available potential in the canals in different parts of the world but still uh, still there are a lot of things that need to be done for for promoting uh some summer, summer turbines uh, in a large way um to us uh, policy plays a, a very 
um, primary role in promoting such a kind of a technologies and interventions, um, uh, conducive policies and existence of uh, a policy mechanism and road uh, uh, map for uh, deploying such technologies is, is very essential. In my presentation, I'll just uh, run over uh, uh, about the, the policy mechanism that's available in, in Pakistan, the, the potentials of our, uh, that can be harnessed for such kind of technologies, uh, what are the current policy mechanisms existing in the country and what needs to be done? Uh, because this is very essential, uh, very important to note that what should we uh, give uh, uh, to the to, and consumers or the deployers for uh, adopting to this new technology concept. Uh, giving you an overview of what is small hydropower potential in Pakistan, uh, basically uh, uh, the country is blessed with five uh, rivers uh, that's running from uh, upper Himalayas uh, and it goes down up to um, the um, Arabian Ocean, Arabian Sea. Uh, it, it comprises of a uh, number of tributaries and uh, it has a large uh, canal system uh, that's uh, spread over all of the country for agriculture purposes. Um, technologies like this submersible uh, hydro turbines have a large de deployment potential for um, in areas where the tributaries and canals exist. This is the primary area where actually the most of the large hydropower plants are being planned in the country. Um, uh, from there, uh, a network of uh, um, canal tributaries and uh, uh, the other hydropower uh, hydro uh, structures uh, emerged for uh, different purposes, including uh, drinking water and agriculture. The second uh, circle indicates the area where uh, major deployment of canals uh, in Pakistan exists. That uh, provides for um, for uh, uh, cultivation of uh, uh, crops in different parts of, of the country. Talking about the available uh, potential and ranges uh, of the Somal hydropower, uh, what we can see from the table that the the um, KP, Punjab, Baltistan, Sin, and Azad Jammu, Kashmir, all the five, five segments of the country are well blessed with uh, the small hydropower potential uh, ranging from 0.2 uh, megawatt to 40 megawatts. This also includes number of sites that are uh, located uh, at small uh, waterfalls, initial uh, waterfalls canals, uh, then these canals are, are best suited for deployment of submersible uh, hydro turbines for generation of electricity. Um, as I indicated, policy mechanism is very essential for the for the deployment of such kind of technologies. Just providing you an overview of what the policy uh, mechanism are exist in the country. Um, I policy has mandated ADB to facilitate. Uh, uh, small hydropower sector investment is up to 50 megawatt. That means uh, micro, mini, high, and small hydropower plants starting from kilowatts to, to 50 megawatt uh, come up within the purview of this policy that's been uh, administered by AEDB. Um, these projects are basically allowed to be undertaken under different modes that include solicited and unsolicited. Uh, since uh, in, in canal falls, um, unsolicited uh, modes are being deployed because um, a solicitation has not been done in the country for such uh, uh, interventions. And more um, realistically, the submersible turbines we will be installed. Um, these are going to be an unsolicited uh, sites uh, because of uh, uh, lesser data and uh, lesser proximity of feasible studies done by the public sector. Our policy it also allows uh, government guarantees mechanisms for small hydropower uh, plants. Um, these are primarily for uh, large scale projects that are going to be connected to, to the grid for supply of electricity. However, there uh, can be some mechanisms for distributed generation of electricity from 
some submersible turbines had been installed in different locations. Um, we feel that um, there needs to be an incentive mechanism announced uh, for the promotion of such kind of technologies. Uh, these incentives should be um, a mix of financial and fiscal incentives that would uh, uh, ease the investment scenarios. Um, um, as we go through the renewable energy policy mechanism that's been uh, evolved since 2006 and being implemented, that includes um, exemptions of duties and taxes, allowing income tax uh, um, uh, exemptions, repatriation of equity, PKR, USD, uh, parity, and uh, return on equities, and other kind of sovereign guarantees, and mandatory purchase of electricity. These are a very uh, conducive and important policy uh, mechanism that need to be uh, set in place before we can go forward for the promotion of such technologies. More importantly, uh, things which is uh, to be considered at the moment for evacuation of power is uh, availability of grid for such kind of technology because in most of the cases, the sites available are usually off-sited uh, away from the national grids. They need to be an infrastructure available. The power purchase need to be there for evacuation and distribution of electricity. Uh, upon the current developments, there have been uh, the te different technologies have been deployed in in Pakistan. Uh, likewise, in other parts of the country, uh, South region like in Nepal, Sri Lanka. Uh, in Pakistan, there have been utilization of cosmo turbines, um, Pelton wheel turbines. Uh, and uh, and Kaplan type turbines. However, the submersible turbines have not been deployed to that level. That should have been uh, considered that this technology can commercially be deployed for uh, for different applications, including distributed generation. Uh, talking about the prospects, how uh, uh, good is the prospect for uh, such kind of a technology intervention? and what need to be done uh, for for promotion of uh, uh, some visible uh, hydro turbines we can segment it uh, these into two major interventions one is on grid large scale hydropower projects these projects can range from 1 megawatt to uh, 10 or 20 megawatts because in canal falls usually the ranges of uh, available potential as per the resource available in pakistan range between 1 to 20 megawatts. For that purpose, um, we can deploy the submersible turbines for within the regions where on uh, grid availability uh, is in, can be ensured. The investors can be uh, promoted for direct foreign investment, equity partnerships, debt financing, credit lines. This can be uh, very prospective for small hydro power projects in the country. But the most important thing which need to be taken uh, into consideration by the policy makers and the, and the renewable energy policy specifically talks about providing um, security packages for uh, to many uh, interventions. That's uh, about the country um, in uh, profile for the energy supplies. More than 22 million electricity consumers are facing energy shortage in the country and more than uh, 70 million people are not connected to the grid. Um, the networks of so, small tributaries as indicated uh, in previous slides and the canal potential that's available in the country can be utilized uh, by uh, deploying some suitable turbines to, to electrify all those areas which are so far not uh, being uh, uh, electrified or provided uh, electricity services in the country. There can be a number of interventions that can lead towards uh, more promotion of the of the summer silver turbine that includes community scale micro mini uh, small hydro power project um, under different models. Um, one of the most prospective models that have been deployed in SAC region that includes uh, energy services companies model. Under this model, the privacy the companies can be encouraged to install these uh, submersible turbines to generate electricity and distribute the electricity to the end consumers and and uh, uh, to the energy services. For that purpose, what uh, 
uh, private sector or the lenders or or the or the commerce can do that includes um, grants and non schemes rental models property use of small hydro power for economic uplift is very important component that can be integrated into these models uh, likewise uh, if i would share the experience of our hundred support program in jitra region what they did they installed uh, more than 103 micro hydro turbines to generate electricity and supply to the jitra region for not only for electricity uh, lighting purposes but also for um, generating economic activities that improve the economic life and economic value of the country. This is a very essential part as as uh, is interlinked with the electricity supply that lead towards economic uplift. There are there are four distinctive issues that have been faced so far uh, that need to be taken care of. There can be a number of more, but uh, uh, to us. Uh, four major areas that need to be taken care of before we uh, offtake the uh, such kind of uh, this, uh, technology interventions so that um, um, we can get benefit of uh, such kind of uh, technological in developments in the world. Uh, first of all, there should be a clear policy mechanism with distinctive targets, uh, risk metrics, risk, clear assigned responsibilities, and supporting measures. This should be clearly identified, set in place, so that whosoever want to invest in these technologies uh, and get benefit of the available potential should know what it, uh, he or she has to do, to whom they have to con contact, uh, who will be the interface from the common side, what the common is intending to do, and how can they get benefit of uh, available um, policy mechanism in, in the country so that they can get hold of uh, this potential and generate electricity for the pub different uh, models that have been explained earlier. One window facility for uh, is very essential for all kind of interventions because in uh, we feel that there should be one interface of the investor or or the de or the developer or the who is to run the technology. Otherwise, uh, as uh, we have been experiencing that. Um, there are a number of windows that a, a, um, a company or uh, a services entrepreneur has to face while undertaking the project that basically uh, enhances the project development period. This um, increases the project gestation period and also creates so many risks if, uh, that uh, uh, compel increasing of the project cost. These need to be taken care of by having only one window facility that uh, take care of all the all the prospective issues that come across while executing or undertaking such kind of projects. The other important thing is that uh, site-specific technical data should be made available uh, so that whosoever intends to do uh, any kind of installation uh, should know upfront where it is going to execute the project. Uh, sorry. Uh, where it's going to execute the project and uh, what uh, would be the prospective resource available in the, uh, uh, at the particular site, uh, how much uh, an investor can generate, and how can uh, it can disperse the the electricity generated to within uh, that proximity of the uh, site available. Um, the other important, the last important thing which we feel is that the site that's available for deployment uh, whose data is made available to the general public should be within the proximity for grid or and or within the load center so that the dis disbursement or distribution costs should be made minimal. Supporting mechanisms that are needed for, for deployment of uh, such technology in a small hydropower development that can include there should be a, um, a uh, set tariff mechanism for sale purchase of electricity so that um, the energy services companies or the investors or the developers should know upfront that at what cost they are going to sell the electricity and make their uh, pro profit uh, uh, as as uh, what they need or require. Uh, also, it is essential for the um, community who is, be, who is going to be connected to that kind of electricity generation facilities 
so that they should know at what price they they're going to uh, purchase electricity from the facilities being being deployed the other important thing is that there should be a well placed well established well set in security documents likewise implementation agreement or implementation agreement or any kind of a security package that the government of pakistan intends to offer to uh, in energy services companies or developers or in, in, or investors uh, the other important thing is uh, there should be a nexus between federal and provincial governments um, as uh, as far as uh, the pakistan is concerned uh, the agriculture and irrigation sector sector is uh, privatized uh, or sorry not provided but provincialized after the 18 amendment um, since the intervention of the provincial governments uh, in in a large way for, for uh, such kind of uh, uh, technology innovation and deployment there is a need that the federal and provincial governments or state governments should be uh, in line with such kind of developments and have a, a good nexus so that the deployer uh, of the technology should uh, face uh, uh, the, the uh, all the uh, interventions in in a very uh, coordinated way um, the other important thing is that uh, market mechanism should be set in place uh, for the energy service companies or the developers or the investors so that they can uh, um, benefit out of those and can have a better overlook of how they can make profits and what uh, interventions they can make. Um, buyers of electricity is very important for such kind of interventions. Um, if if uh, an energy service company intends to generate electricity and the supply to the consumers, uh, they need to be uh, real time guarantee all kind of. Uh, a mechanism available before the investor that the buyers will remain intact with with the with the seller uh, so that long term uh, operations of the plants can be made possible um there should be certain areas that uh, that should be highlighted or disseminated before the energy services companies or the investors or developers where the distribution network may exist and where uh, that that can be used for distribution of electricity in in uh, in within the proximity of areas and if there is no distribution network uh, available uh, within that region what uh, uh, can be done is that a, a certain uh, set of techno technical parameters should be set in place that should be made part of the overall scheme for generation and supplying of electricity within the proximity of that load center. Uh, the other important thing which uh, going to support development and promotion of this of these kind of technologies is local manufacturing of the plants. Um, as uh, uh, I have indicated in previous slides that there is a lot of potential available in the country and likewise uh, in other parts of the SAC Energy Center. Uh, this kind of a potential can be deployed by by uh, this submersible turbines uh, and uh, uh, can be utilized for generation electricity. However, localization of manufacturing technology is very essential to reduce the overall cost. Uh, for that purpose, uh, what we can do is we with the we can encourage transfer of technology. Um, we can create direct investment partnerships uh, and. Uh, there is a need to arrange debt financing and credit lines. For that purpose, uh, we can engage with donors and the lenders uh, so that a mechanism can be set in place for um, transfer of technology and manufacturing of uh, such kind of uh, turbines like summer silver turbines. Uh, this is all this available with me. Uh, I'm all available for uh, answering to any question re related to my presentation or uh, any additional uh, question if that may arise by the audience uh, in due course. Thanks.
thank you very much uh, dr irfan yusuf uh, for a very detailed uh, presentation on the policy aspect and you very rightly uh, mentioned that uh, policy interventions like these are necessary for the uptake of uh, technology and uh, for the consumption of uh, all the participant i would like to mention again that uh, since this technology uh, submersible water turbine is a very new and novel technology so then uh, what we did was we asked specifically from our uh, government bodies that uh, please give a presentation on the uh, aspect of uh, maybe micro hydro power project because it is very closely related to the submersible water turbines and since the tech, uh, policy interventions and regulatory framework required for the micro hydro power projects would be similarly are very close to the submersible water turbine so th this also gives you a perspective of how you would move forward uh, if you would like uh, submersible water turbines uh, technologies to uptake in your uh, specific relevant country so i would quickly go through with uh, what irfan yusuf sahab has already mentioned in his presentation just to give a uh, overview of that he mentioned something about the uh, small hydro power product uh, pro, pro, uh, power potential in pakistan which ranges between uh, 3270 megawatts a huge potential in the northern areas of pakistan then he mentioned the, about the close relationship required with the provisional government because they are the main entities responsible for under uh, overtaking the projects or taking the electricity out of those projects then he mentioned uh, specifically in re policy uh, 2006 uh, uh, of pakistan uh, whose salient features include uh, over uh, uh, doing projects uh, by alternative energy development board uh, under 50 megawatt of installed capacity uh, with the uh, private sector investment and uh, the incentives being offered by the government uh, is uh, in range of uh, like for example it gives an incentive uh, such as 17 to 18 uh, uh, percent of uh, return on equity uh, uh, in the tariff which is a, a very lucrative kind of a uh, offer by government of pakistan then it also gives a upfront tariff for uh, shp projects uh, regularly announced by uh, napra which is the uh, national electric power regulatory authority uh, the regulator for electricity in pakistan it also gives a uh, incentive such as a uh, uh, it gives incentive that uh, there is a mandatory purchase of power from the, the uh, from the producer, uh, and uh, there is a binding for the uh, utility uh, to uh, purchase the power from them. Then uh, he mentioned something about the uh, we we had earlier also talked about the same topic of uh, uh, community scale projects under uh, energy services company model. He uh, mentioned that since these hydropower projects have been uh, micro hydropower projects have been working under this model so the same could be uh, may, maybe could be replicated uh, in in form of uh, submersible water turbines then he mentioned some issues faced by the uh, small hydropower power product uh, sector which includes the uh, technical data availability that that is very important because for a, a project developer at uh, the availability uh, of a free data access uh, should be there so that the developer who should be able to uh, work on the developing those projects then he mentioned about the one window facility requirement for the uh, for this uh, sector to overtake because in some instances if two three agencies are involved so it becomes a problem for the project developer uh, to go from one door to two to a second door third door so if it's a, a single entity which is responsible for doing all these uh, licensing and approval it's a very kind of a, a lucrative environment for the investor then he mentioned about the supporting mechanism in form of tariffs epa ia uh, nexus between the federal and provisional governments a distribution network for electricity distributor uh, he mentioned something about the market mechanisms uh, should be available uh, then local manufacturing which is a very important aspect uh, we have been emphasizing this uh, for uh, for the two day webinar that transfer of technology of uh, these uh, turbines should be there direct investment and a partnership with the donor agencies should be done for a future project uh, development in this important sector so thank you very much uh, dr ifan yusuf for your uh, very valuable presentation and very relevant presentation i would uh, say so uh, we now move over to question answer session uh, we have some questions from uh, uh, nepal mr uh, madhu uh, hitu all has asked few questions from uh, dr irfan yusuf he's saying that have we observed any possibilities of increasing situation of uh, spilling regulated flow from canal banks after installing series of turbines in cross section as well as longitudinal section in the designated canal system 
uh, I'm not sure that we have installed these turbines uh, in this uh, in this canal system uh, this much amount of turbines. But Doctor, with your experience, can you uh, very shortly or briefly uh, touch this uh, topic, this question, sir? Um, uh, as in, uh, you have very rightly pointed out that uh, this technology is has not been deployed uh, in the country in, in the last year, as I indicated in my presentation. Pakistan has so far experienced uh, cross water turbines or captain turbines for very small applications ranging from a few kilowatts to megawatts. Uh, but since uh, this submersible turbine technology is not been deployed in canals, such uh, I cannot. Uh, um, shared experience of uh, spilling of water in channels. Uh, however, this is very likely that uh, if, if um, uh, there can be an issue of uh, uh, spilling of water or the bank's uh, uh, stability issue uh, while deploying this, this kind of technology. However, a proper design of turbines and taking care of uh, all the parameters, technical parameters, can um, upfront can reduce such kind of risk. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sir, for your elaborate answer on that one. So we have a question, uh, same question from Mr. Madhu Hetowal, who has asked that who will be responsible for power evacuation from these projects? And please elaborate on the tariff ranges and agency responsible for PPA. So with your experience, can you just briefly touch these topics? I'm sure there are no agencies responsible for these uh, since this is a very new technology, but you can just briefly touch the topic on this one. Yeah, um, they, they, as I indicated, there can be two interventions with regards to power evacuation. One is uh, on grid supply of electricity. If uh, a power plant of more than one megawatt uh, comes in and supplies electricity for for the distribution, uh, distribution companies uh, are liable to uptake the electricity uh, under commercial mode. They can buy the electricity from the power plant. And for that purpose, NEPRA is a regulator, a National Electric Power Regulatory Authority, who sets the tariff for uh, sale or purchase of electricity. Um, but for the purpose of distributed uh, supply of electricity, uh, and that includes community scale, um, th there is no set uh, um, power purchaser, however, uh, as uh, different models being developed uh, so far for the, for the uh, uh, um, microgrid installations, using micro wind and some solar PV technologies, similar technological interventions can be made possible wherein the energy services companies can um, deploy the distribution mechanism for distributing electricity and sell to the nearby communities and uh, serve their purposes based on tariff that's being negotiated with the community. And for that purpose, concurrence of NEPRA is essential. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sir, for your uh, elaborate answer. So, the ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Dr. Shweb Ahmed Saab would like to intervene and uh, just comment on this uh, previous question from Mr. Madhu Hetuwal. Anybody from the participant want to share their opinion or their questions, they can raise hand or share their opinions also. So, over to Dr. Sir for this question from Mr. Madhu Hetuwal regarding the siltation or spilling regulated flow from canal banks after installing series of turbine in cross section as well as long section. Please. Well, thank you, Ayesan. Uh, actually, I thought uh, I I should also share my whatever my experience or knowledge is in this regard. Uh, Mr. Madhu, uh, your question is very, very valid. But uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, it has not been studied, at least in the, by the Sark Energy Center. Because uh, whatever we did, the work we have done as uh, so far, uh, we have uh, that is based on uh, only one turbine. So first of all, it has not been studied. Secondly, there is a very remote possibility of spilling water out of the banks, uh, especially from the regular canals. It, it looks very, very remote. There are two reasons for it. First of all, because there is a distance between two turbines, uh, and of course, if the turbines are uh, also installed in an uh, array of turbines is installed in the cascaded position, there is fairly good distance the speakers have recommended to be kept between that. Of course, they were talking about 
to minimizing the weak effect uh, on that. But that distance, I think it is sufficient enough that in which whatever the speed of that water is reduced because of uh, these turbines, that would be regained just because of the available uh, through the natural gravity. Okay. And the water would be again uh, uh, regaining its original speed just by passing that distance. In case if there is any condition that you feel that, okay, yes, this is becoming a real, real uh, problem. In that case, I suppose uh, the only recommendation would be that, okay, uh, only recommendation would be that okay increase the distance between the turbines uh, I think that would uh, fairly resolve your apprehension in that regard because this type of problem has not has not been first of all uh, has not been studied in the by the Sark energy center never it has been uh, I have in under my observation it has not been reported in the literature as well but that, that's only my personal views. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saab, for your uh, nice reviews and your uh, comment you. on the specific question. Uh, so with this, uh, I, uh, we have a lot of uh, questions from uh, the participants and we feel that we are uh, lacking behind the schedule. Uh, so we would quickly go on with, uh, uh, first of all, we would like to specifically thank Dr. Irfan Yusuf for his very nice presentation and for giving us time from his busy schedule uh, working in the ministry and getting time out of uh, this for this webinar uh, shows how enthusiastic and eager he is to contribute in this uh, noble cause of uh, uh, supporting this technology so dr farsa thank you very much again for your very nice presentation and thanks again thanks to the yeah. energy center and the listeners as well who have provided me opportunity to contribute and uh, brief the participants about the prospect in Pakistan and the policy mechanisms. I'm really thankful. So, uh, thank you, sir. So now we uh, we would uh, again. Uh, I, I have been informed that Mr. Nadeem Ev Awan Sahib might be online. Uh, so we would check him uh, one last time if he is available. Uh, so if it's, it's available, we would continue with his uh, uh, presentation. Otherwise, then we would move on to our knowledge sharing. Uh, session. So, uh, Mr. Nadeem Awan, I would uh, now uh, give the mic to you if uh, uh, so we have uh, we don't have Nadeem Awan Sahib online. I guess he's having some uh, very uh, uh, very uh, troubles uh, connecting with the system. Sometimes problem like these uh, technical issues arise uh, and uh, you must, uh, all the participants must appreciate that it's very difficult to, uh, for some time to all the, to get all the experts online. And uh, we, our IT team is continuously trying to uh, get him online. If it's, it's, if it's possible before the allocated time, we would definitely include his presentation in our uh, session. So uh, now quickly, I will move on to our uh, next knowledge sharing uh, session. Uh, we specifically designed this session because we thought that if there are some questions. Uh, which have been uh, left over uh, or which have been uh, which have which were remained unanswered uh, so we would like to address those issues uh, or we would like to uh, comment on those uh, uh, question answers uh, if they are left behind so we have some uh, questions from uh, uh, various uh, participants and uh, anyone is uh, anyone uh, willing to uh, reply on that one can raise their hand or if he's interested, he can reply back. Uh, so we have a question that if a private project developer wants to establish a localized distribution system, making use of uh, micro hydro power, are there any licensing regulations? So we would see if uh, uh, whoever is interested. Irfan. So uh, I think Dr. Irfan Yusuf, if he's instructed. Uh, so Dr. Irfan Yusuf, would you be willing to reply to such question? Uh, am I audible to Irfan Saab? Yes. I think. Yes. Uh, did you listen to my question, sir? 
No, actually, no, I haven't listened. I was. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I may like to repeat the question. We have a question from uh, one of the participant. He has asked a question that if a private project developer wants to establish a localized distribution system making use of MHP, are there any licensing regulations? We, yes, we, we specifically yes. directed the question to you because we thought that you being a government uh, representative of government body could answer this specific question correctly, sir. Yes, there, there are uh, uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, 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 a company who is intended to establish a distribution network needs to get license for National Electric Regulatory Authority of Pakistan, which is called NEPRA. Uh, for for generation and distrib distribution of electricity, without this, it's not be possible for the company to, to carry out the business. Uh, thank you very much, Irfan Sab, uh, for a very uh, nice reply and very uh, detailed comment on the specific question. So uh, we have. Uh, uh, receive one more question from uh, Mr. Umar Mukhtar. He would like to ask, what are the tariff requirements for small hydro for private sector investment uh, of an off-grid generation to be sold to local communities? So if Farfan Sahib, you, uh, you may like to respond to that question, sir. Uh, yeah, I, uh, basically, uh, it's all talks uh, about the tariff mechanisms to, to be set in place. At the moment, uh, uh, there is no tariff uh, uh, announced by the regulator for such kind of interventions, mm, but um, uh, as uh, uh, per the policy mechanism available uh, with the NEPRA, what uh, a private sector company can do, it can work upon this cost uh, analysis and based on its cost analysis and, and the technical numbers of uh, electricity units that can be generated, it can work upon the, uh, a, a tariff that is suitable for uh, an investor to generate electricity or and sell it to the community. Uh, NEPRA has its own uh, process for evaluating the costs and, uh, and the energy numbers. Uh, after evaluating uh, as per the process, it determines a tariff for uh, such kind of interventions. And this tariff, uh, uh, if accepted or agreed by the company, uh, can be made available to for the company uh, for uh, undertaking this kind of intervention. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Farsab, uh, for your uh, reviews and your uh, comments on the specific question. So I may now, uh, I think we are very uh, much behind the schedule and we are having uh, some difficulty connecting to, still connecting to Mr. Nadeem Awan, for which we are very uh, sorry, Mr. Nadeem Awan, for, uh, because of some technical issue, we could not connect back to him. But obviously, his presentation would be available at our website. Anybody uh, wish to uh, see his presentation can have a look at it. And if he has some specific questions, he can direct it to us and we will uh, definitely ask uh, Mr. Nadeem Awan that specific question. Uh, Dr. Rafan Yusuf, we are very thankful to you for your uh, very, uh, uh, very specific and relevant replies to the questions regarding policy and regulation uh, aspect of the technology. Uh, we are grateful to you uh, for joining us in this uh, webinar. And uh, due to being uh, behind the schedule, we are going to uh, f finish this uh, knowledge sharing session for now. Uh, the future questions would be directed to the expert in future uh, through email or anybody can text us or send us an email. Your, your recommendations are most welcome. You can uh, give your feedback on our webinar uh, uh, after this uh, this gets closed. So Dr. Fansa, thank you very much uh, for, your, for you being with us and we are grateful to you for uh, supporting us in this uh, webinar. Thank I'll you, sir. Player. It's a player uh, for, uh, and really grateful for us for providing the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we are at the uh, very last session of our uh, webinar, uh, which includes the conclusions, uh, recommendations, and the closing of the webinar. Uh, I have been uh, assigned the responsibility to go through this uh, session. So, uh, we had some excellent uh, presentations from uh, uh, many experts around the globe and South Asia region specifically. Uh, we had Dr. Uh, Nawaz Akhtar uh, being the main expert of this study report. Uh, we are very thankful to you, sir. 
uh, we have umar mukhtar mr ehsanullah uh, marwar uh, dr shoaib ahmed saab for his uh, uh, time uh, in uh, in attending this webinar uh, we are also grateful to mr asif farid from giz uh, dr karl komsi smart hydro from germany mr tomaso morbiato wind city from italy uh, and for uh, mr trey taylor for providing um, uh, us permission for giving us permission to uh, uh, to uh, play his short interview uh, uh, of uh, commercial aspects then we are also grateful to mr malik nadim awan and mr irfan yusuf who joined us after the break on the sessions of business perspective and policy change challenges uh, for this hydrokinetic turbines uh, we are all we are grateful to each and every expert and we are also grateful to all the attendees who uh, spent their time listening to this uh, fruitful discussion and this uh, important uh, technology aspects uh, so uh, moving on to the conclusion side i have uh, i have uh, noted down some conclusions which we received from the uh, participants and we have also also noted down these conclusions uh, during the course of these two day uh, webinar uh, so i am going to uh, announce these conclusions uh, uh, one by one uh, uh, one by one uh, so uh, the first conclusion came to us is that uh, webinars uh, were are very effective in disseminating the knowledge sharing of this noble noble technology so obviously we agree that webinars have been very effective uh, in the very uh, recent times and uh, we are going to conduct more webinars in future too then there was another conclusion that experience was instrumental by uh, uh, by uh, the researchers uh, by uh, inviting the researchers and academia into this uh, debate of policy makers and uh, manufacturers we always felt that the policy makers and manufacturers uh the discussion should be involved uh, with the researchers and academia also uh, to collaborate and uh, join hands uh, in development of this uh, important technology uh, then we have a, a conclusion that the community scale projects under esco model uh, for this technology uh, could be beneficial in future uh, which is very rightly said uh, uh, keeping in perspective of the micro hydro uh, power success story in pakistan there is a requirement for awareness building and introduction of technology awareness building should be done on the uh, government side and on the uh, on the researcher and academia side too then we have an, uh, another conclusion that canal water operator owners to encourage allowed for installation of turbines are renting out the water resource uh, a very important conclusion that uh, canals operators should be allowed to do that are uh, for renting out their water resource and this one. then we have another conclusion uh, utilities should be bound to off take the generated electricity and subsequently sell it under green energy incentive uh, this is uh, also very important that uh, they must be uh, bound to off take all the generated electricity which in case of pakistan there is the provision included in the uh, government policy but other member states have also included this in their specific policies then there is a uh, another conclusion that uh, Uh, foreign producers and manufacturers should be allowed to test trial their products in uh, sark region uh, testing facilities we already heard something about the uh, testing facilities uh, before commissioning and after commissioning so these things uh, could be uh, have uh, testing laboratories in pakistan or some kind of a uh, arrangement in that aspect do we have for some limited time the equipment of this technology should be waived off all taxes duties and dvs which is very understandable that um, for a new technology to uh, uptake in a market uh, some kind of incentives up front should be given to uh, that technology so these were uh, ladies and gentlemen these were the uh, few of the uh, conclusions which we had received from the which we have gathered during the course of this two day uh, seminar now i move on quickly to the recommendation side uh, actually these recommendations have uh, been provided to us from the participants and from the uh, experts uh, of south asia uh, region and uh, also from the abroad uh, experts who joined us during this webinar so i will uh, quickly read out all the recommendations uh, one by one so the first recommendation was that because of relatively low cost and durability of hydrokinetic turbines uh, including sark member states can manufacture and implement the technology to supply the needed electricity to smart communities and villages the second recommendation is that giz which is a german uh, development agency should be requested to help out sark energy center in the installation of different design concepts of submersible turbines 
for demonstration purposes on the upper jhelum canal but, and and obviously this is a pilot study so we uh, took uh, it we took this study in pakistan but for sure the concepts also say that we have to replicate the same type of projects if successful in other sarc member states then uh, mr carl comsi may be invited to pakistan to involve him in exploitation of the technology by arranging his visits to potential sites in pakistan um, maybe may some kind of uh, international experts may be invited to uh, are involved in the uh, evaluation or uh, uh, finding of the potential for uh, this technology in uh, south asian canals and rivers first then uh, responsible government institutes should include the um hydrokinetic submersible turbines in their list of renewable energy technologies for example in policies uh, renewable uh, policies uh, solar and wind is included hydro is included but this technology needs to be included in their uh, already designated renewable energy technologies uh, further investigation on deployment of this technology to be carried out and then uh, responsible government institutes should make arrangement for assessment of resource potential in respective member state a very interesting and uh, important uh, recommendation uh, which uh, which clearly states that uh, before implementation of any project assessment of resource potential should be carried out in uh, all the south asian countries uh, then responsible uh, government institutes uh, should uh, make awareness campaign for for introduction of this technology in their Uh, respective uh, uh, countries so uh, then we have another recommendation that to popularize and boost interest in the installation of hydrokinetic energy projects government subsidies may be allowed till the full utilization of this uh, resource potential which is a very understandable and uh, very relevant uh, uh, recommendation import duties and taxes we have already talked about that one that those those should be levied Uh, for uh, in first future uh, in first of the initial projects so ladies and gentlemen uh, <clears throat> we conclude this uh, the recommendation and the conclusions are over for us uh, we would definitely uh, i would once once again uh, announce that all the presentations and the short interviews uh, uh, of this webinar will be uploaded on our sec official website uh, by monday uh, evening maybe because we would need maybe some time to uh, gather the presentation from the experts plus on top of that if you need any assistance any information you require you can write back to us uh, to specifically to our program leader mr uh, dr akhtar nawaz or maybe you can also write back to our email address info@sarkenergy.org uh, you can also send us any recommendation any uh, advice you want to seek or if you need to uh, develop this technology in your country and you need assistance of sark energy center as an anchor Uh, between the manufacturer and your country you can write back to us and we would be uh, willing to help and facilitate you as much as possible uh, plus uh, it was a wonderful experience uh, uh, for sark energy center doing this conducting this webinar and uh, to for your in soft information and consumption of the house uh, this is one of the first webinar but we are going to uh, do more webinars in future the upcoming webinar of on difficulties for solar home solar home systems Uh, in sark region will be held on 6th march of 2018 i would repeat the next webinar of solar home systems would be held on 6th march 2018 very uh, very soon you will get uh, valuable information about the upcoming webinar on our website agenda will be uploaded and it will be uh, uh, in information will be routed through the uh, sark secretariat Uh, so any question any comments are welcome sarkneji center is there to help you and facilitate you as much as possible uh, so ladies and gentlemen with this i thank you all again for your uh, patience uh, during some technical difficulties and for also listening to this uh, fruitful discussion by the panelists and the experts i thank you again and uh, god bless you bye